anything that you want. Always, we bring things to the table to discuss as well. Uh, and the we includes me, Ian. Danica. And Daryl. All right, so uh, let's start where we agreed on our show prep. Normally, we bring stuff in and sort of compare notes. Who wants to talk about what? Daryl, you and I had the same story, uh, which is always a good sign. It's the one about the uh, another crosswalk illegal, uh, like an illegal painter, if you will. Somebody yes. who has decided to go ahead and improve upon the city to repair some crappy uh, painting jobs, apparently. Tell me more about this and where's it happening. So this is down in Massachusetts, the town of Balerica. And George Silla, or Similaris, who is a selectman there, decided that, well, since town officials weren't uh, painting the crosswalk, she would take paint into his own hands. So the, the town's own selectman is doing this. I didn't realize that yes. was going to be the case. That's an interesting twist. Yeah, so uh, selectman is basically the town-level version of city councilor for most of the alderman. country. Yeah. Uh, so Balerica is about 25 miles from Boston, so you know it gives people some kind of idea where it is. Uh, Similaris said he was tired of constituents asking him when the white paint would be freshened up, <laughs> so he fixed the problem himself. Awesome. Good for he him. He personally bought cans of green paint, the town's official color, spent the weekend painting over six faded crosswalks. Good for him. He says, quote, all I've heard for months is when is this going to get done? I got sick of it. What a Police go, what a and other town officials said that painting the street without authorization was illegal Uh-oh. and charged him with two counts of destruction of property. What? Wow. Now, I'm curious why it's only two and not six, because he admits to having painted six crosswalks. Hmm. So I don't know if it was like one intersection of four and then somewhere else is two. Look, so, buddy, we're going easy on you. It's only two charges. We appreciate what you did, but we still got to punish you anyway. Yeah. Now pay up. Town manager, yeah, and pay up it is going to be. Town <laughs> oh. manager John Curran said the town was in the midst of a $400,000 pedestrian safety project that required them to dig up the streets, including some of the uh, crosswalks, and that they were going to paint them once construction was complete. Yeah, sure. Just right around the corner. He added that Similaris... You've been waiting for how many years? Similaris would be required to pay the $4,000 cost of cleaning up the paint because some of his paint Say, chipped what? and smeared. What? <laughs> Curran added, his job is to uphold the law, not to break it. <laughs> he has no respect for the government process. This is... Hold on. This is the town manager who's town saying manager this about the selectman? <laughs> said of the selectman... His job is to uphold the laws, not to break them, <laughs> and that he has no respect for the governmental process. Wow. Similaris defended his actions, saying, I'm just trying to do right by the people in my town. Yeah. I didn't think I was intervening in other people's day-to-day -day activities or doing anything wrong. He clearly wasn't intervening in the city's day-to-day -day activities. Otherwise, they would have been out there painting the crosswalks. Now we, We've got to dig up the road first. Uh -huh, we're just not sure, sure when we're going to do that. we got to destroy that, the so. road before we can build the right. roads. And now because you've painted it, we need to charge you $4,000 before we destroy the road? Is that right? Right. Uh, you are required, Mr. Selectman, to pay $4,000 to clean up the paint. Because some of it chipped and smeared, and what? at some point, we're still going to destroy the road. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Now, what I'd like to know is, I mean, a little more about this guy, right? This town uh, selectman who is the hero of the story. It's very rare that you get to say that a town selectman has done something heroic and has really gone out and you know put his butt on the line for something. And in this case, this guy did, totally. So I wonder how long, for how long he's been a selectman in this town. Not that you necessarily know or that this article reveals that, Daryl. Just sort of wondering aloud. Maybe somebody down there in uh, Balerica can call in toll-free at 855-450-FREE. Uh, and, you know, other conflicts this guy might have gotten into because it sounds like he might be an interesting character to watch. You know, he he might actually make this might be the kind of selectman who makes a town selectman meeting interesting to attend because they're not afraid to say what's on their mind, not afraid to, you know, go against the grain, so to speak. Right. And I'm glad you asked the question about wanting to know more about uh, George Similaris. Mm -hmm. And Boston Magazine actually did a profile piece on After? him a couple of days ago. Okay. 
Yeah, so the headline is, Who is Selectman George Similaris of Balerica's <laughs> hashtag paint gate? Yeah, I don't paint know if he's gate. a libertarian at all, but uh, I certainly uh, I certainly appreciate what he's up to. These are the facts. Balerica Selectman George Similaris, a house painter by trade, used ah. green deck paint. Green is significant here as it's Balerica's de facto color to cover five crosswalks in town. Similaris, a vocal advocate of, among other things, pedestrian safety, was frustrated that the crosswalks had not yet been painted and decided to take matters into his own hands. That's got to be annoying. I mean, you're sitting there, you've got uh, people contacting you. You, As a town selectman, I don't know if that's like a full-time job in Balerica. Probably not. It, it, It probably isn't. Uh, so he probably, like you're saying, he owns a, a painting company. He's doing his business, and yet he's getting calls from uh, his you know, constituents yes. complaining about this. He's probably put in notices to the town manager and to whoever's in charge of park, uh, what, whatever that is, Department of Public Works would probably, probably. be uh, that department. So he's probably put the word out, hey, I'm hearing from my constituents. Uh, you guys going to do something about this? And they're BSing him or just you know blowing, blowing him off. Imagine and- that part of your tax is not going to something that people actually want to be done. <laughs> yeah, it's frustrating. And uh, and we've seen, this isn't the first story like this. I mean, this- right, we covered the story from Mississippi a couple of years ago where the guy was taking like the tar and patch and filling in the potholes. Yep. And he wound up getting charged with some offense for, like, uh, improving city property without a permit or something. Some neighbors in a town in the United Kingdom also fixed up a road that had been just potholed to hell and was sort of wasting away. They finally pooled their money together and made a really nice road, and the city came after them as well. So, I mean, they really take this Monopoly stuff really seriously. Yes. It, it would be, you'd think, you'd think that, People who want to make their community better wouldn't be punished for doing so, going outside of the official channels and just taking responsibility for a problem, seeing a problem, taking responsibility for fixing it, and fixing it. And no, they are being punished for that, and it's not uncommon at all. Yeah, and apparently the charges are misdemeanors. Wow, okay, so criminal charges. So these are criminal charges, plus he's got to pay the $4,000 to clean up the paint that well, that hasn't been he, ordered by a court yet, right? That's just what the town manager saying. Right, that's what the manager yeah. is telling him. Uh, and I doubt that any of this has gone through court yet because right. it only happened just a matter of days ago. Mm-hmm. Uh, the story here from Boston Magazine that's sort of the profile piece yeah. says, as a result of his antics, Boston media outlets have descended upon America's Yankee Doodle Town. I love how it's called antics. I mean, this is yes. something that they say a lot about uh, the activism that goes on here in Keene. But at the very least, painting the streets, I think, would be considered work and not antics. Yes. Like, that's that's community improvement. It's not an antic to do that. He's not doing it to you know try to raise his profile or whatever. He already is a high-profile person. Uh, they say that it's given the city, or rather the town, the most attention it's received since Boston 2024 announced Balerica as the home of a proposed venue for Olympic shooting. Because apparently Boston is hosting the Olympics in 2024. All That's right. news to me. Uh, they also mentioned that calendar. the colleagues <laughs> on the board of selectmen have asked Similaris to resign. He has refused. Good for him. The story they write fits neatly into an old-timey narrative of rogue civic duty. Some even compared Similaris to Leslie Nope of Parks and Rec. (laughs) That's a fictional character. Yeah, and I have absolutely no clue who Leslie... She's the main character of the television show Parks and Recreation. Ron Swanson's a better character. Ron Swanson is their libertarian character. Uh, Leslie is just sort of the head boss of the Parks and Rec department. Um, so I'm not sure what they're comparing exactly. I don't, is she supposed to be some kind of rebel in that show? I've seen a couple of seasons. They, they don't go into the comparison there, There's but more there about is the profile. more on this story. Stand by. I want to hear more about this guy. He's a courageous dude, and hopefully he'll be standing up for himself in court and not taking a plea deal. 855 450 free. You can share your thoughts here. This is Free Talk Live. More coming up. I'm Steve Sidkowski, a former Wall Street insider. I'm holding a book that will show you investing strategies which could help you earn the kind of money you've always dreamed about. And right now I'm giving this book away for free. So who needs to read it? If you're in the middle of your career and worry you'll never have enough money to retire, you need to read this book. 
If you're already retired and your income isn't enough, you need to read this book. And if you don't want to be selling burgers at 80, you need to read this free book. It includes the strategy I use to make a 72% profit on a trade where the stock only moved 12%. You'll need at least a million dollars to ever fully retire. If you're behind on that goal, you really need to read Trade Like the Pros. And you can for free by calling 1-800-944-5836. Skeptical that it will deliver results? It's a free book, so what do you have to lose? Find out how at 1-800-944-5836. 1-800-944-5836. This is Mark of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the economic engine that powers our country. With a printing press tethered to Washington bureaucrats and New York central bankers, how can we trust paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, or go to gold.freetalklive.com. Again, 877-357-9938. 877 9938 Farmers keep livestock lean and healthy with a mineral-rich diet. Then, before market, they cut off minerals, leaving them to crave high-calorie grains. If weight control is this easy, why prescribe surgery for humans? Introducing Longevity. You could avoid 900 diseases by getting 90 essential nutrients from Longevity. Check out 90 for Life at tobeyoungagain.com or call 855-79-YOUNG. That's 855-79-YOUNG or tobeyoungagain.com. Longevity. It's all about saving money, getting healthy, and creating wealth. Hi, I'm Daryl W. Perry, and I need your help to give away my newest book. Yes, you heard that right. I want to give away my newest book, A Rebel's Journey. The book describes my path to the ideas of liberty, which began as a search for traditional values. I will only give away the book if I reach my fundraising goal of $2,500. But wait, there's more! If you donate, not only can you get the ebook and the audiobook for free, but you can get bonus audio content, including interviews with Jeffrey Tucker, Lynn Albrecht, Ben Stone, Gardner Goldsmith, and Stephen Kinsella. Or you can get a signed copy of the paperback book and more. Your donation will serve to replace the profits I would have earned through a more traditional publication of the book. The funds raised will allow me to get the book into the hands of more people and to promote the book to a wider audience. To find out more about the book or to donate, visit arebelsjourney.com. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet, around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. New Hampshire is under quarantine as walking corpses devour the flesh of the living. Max is 11 years old and surviving alone. Slow moving and non-thinking, the dead swarm his home. Now he must apply his porcupine Freedom Scouts training to improvise his escape. Look for Survivor Max on Facebook, read reviews on Amazon, or read Chapter 1 at SurvivorMax.com. You can sign up to receive the latest about the Liberty Radio Network via our email updates at updates.lrn.fm. That's updates.lrn.fm. We're back with more Free Talk Live. Of course, you can join us here toll free. Talk about the gentleman who has been, was he arrested or just charged criminally? Uh, Daryl, do you happen to have that, de that detail? I do not have that detail. He has been charged with misdemeanors, which suggests that at the very least he was uh, voluntarily taken, if you will, <laughs> to uh, the police station and booked. So he's a, a town selectman in Balerica, Massachusetts, who went out and repaired some bad crosswalks, some faded crosswalks that hadn't been repainted in I don't know how many years, probably a long time. People have been bugging him about it, and he said he kept hearing from his constituents. He actually is a painter by profession. So, I mean, it's not like they can say that he's just some average schmo who went out there and slapped some paint on the pavement. This guy actually paints for a living. And he's a selectman. And he's a selectman to boot. And now he's been charged criminally for it. If you want to comment, 
Uh, our toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. I mean, I can't even imagine anyone would take the side of the town on this. They just seem – this town manager is flipping out, insulting this man, telling him that he just has no respect for the government's process, that he should have left this alone, and now he's got to pay the town $4,000 plus face criminal charges uh, because they claim they have to go ahead and clean up his work or yes. something like that. We need to restore this to its faded – uh, it's original faded state. So 855-450-FREE if you want to jump in. You can also bring up anything you want. We've got Skype. Our Skype username is lrn.fm. Plus, I want you to know about ProXPN. This is a way to encrypt yourself on the internet, to encrypt your internet connection. Your ISP right now, if you're not encrypted with ProXPN, your ISP knows where you're going, what you're doing online. They are likely logging that information and keeping it for several years in some cases. And then turning it over to who knows who. You can stop that from happening. Plus, you can foil those criminals that might be trying to sniff out your Wi-Fi packets by getting Pro XPN. You can get it for Windows, Mac, iOS, Android, and Linux. Get it installed and then no more prying and spying. Your own internet service provider, they'll still be providing you internet service. They just won't know what you're doing with it once you start using Pro XPN. ProXPN.com slash FTL. Use code FTL50. When you upgrade to premium, because you can start for free right now, but when you're ready to upgrade to get unlimited bandwidth, servers around the world that you can access, you can privately torrent and get past regionally blocked websites. Plus, ProXPN does not keep records of your online habits. You can upgrade to premium for uh, 50% off the regular monthly price when you buy an annual account with code FTL50. That's FTL like Free Talk Live and 50 as in 50% off. There's a risk free seven day money back guarantee. You've got nothing to lose but your privacy. So why wait? Go and get started for free right now at proxpn.com slash FTL and use promo code FTL50 to upgrade and get a great discount on privacy. That is priceless. We're going to continue here. Uh, your calls come first. Matthew listening in Fairfax. And we'll talk more about this town selectman. Who is he? There's a profile piece that Boston Magazine did. Yes. Right? We'll get back into that. Matthew's in Fairfax. You're on Free Talk Live. Go ahead. Hi, guys. I just wanted to uh, maybe defend the town's position for a minute. You're a little muffled. It's pretty hard to make out, actually, what you're saying there. All right. Well, I'll, That's I'll much better. Anyway. That's better. Go ahead. Uh, okay. Well, I'm going to try to defend the town, or at least try to. Um, okay. So in the town's defense, I mean, you can't just have people going around and, and, and doing maintenance all, all throughout the town that's unauthorized. I mean, things like this have to be uh, monitored in some way. Or else you'll just get random people, you know, uh, cutting down public trees or things like that, you know, tragedy to common. But how is painting destructive? If you're cutting down trees, that's destructive. But painting, that's not necessarily destructive. Right, right. And I mean, I guess the way to go about it would be to judge these things on a case-by-case basis. But I just don't know if that's possible. Well, sure it is. It's possible because human beings can judge things on a case-by-case basis. So what's wrong in this case, rather than talking about cutting down trees or destroying a playground or something like that? Right. Well, of course, there's nothing wrong in this case because what he did was a great thing, I think. But... <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> You're trying to play devil's advocate here. <laughs> Very good, yeah, Matthew. Anything else you want to share? No, thanks, Thanks guys. for the call tonight. Toll-free number here, 855-450-FREE. I'd be interested to see you know, some of the responses in the town paper, for instance. Obviously, like you said, Daryl, this is fresh news. Um, but you know, we'll, it would be interesting to see anybody taking the side of the town manager on this one. I mean, this is ridiculous. Oh, you know somebody is because we, we are a nation of laws. We yeah. have to have laws. How dare you do something? Our government should be doing it instead. E- even though you know the laws are poorly written and randomly enforced and... Danica, you said the government should do it. Well, this guy is the government. Like I'm in right. theory, exactly. this guy is the Who government. The funk? He, he, he is not an authorized government representative. He, he's a selectman for the town. He's just a lowly selectman. Move along. Nothing to see here. And let, let's get back into this. Uh, the profile. Profile piece. This is the history. Who is this guy? Uh, so the author of this piece for Boston Magazine says, At my last gig, I covered Similaris as the Balearica beat writer for the Lowell Sun. To understand Similaris, you must first go back to 2012. Former Woburn, Massachusetts mayor and current Balearica town manager John Curran unveiled plans for a comprehensive revamping of the town center, whose traffic patterns, as anyone who's ever driven through Balearica can attest, most closely resembles an unfinished M.C. Esser sketch. (laughs) Similaris 
Sket, uh, Similar set himself in firm opposition to the center project and launched a grassroots campaign to defeat it, chronicled in a documentary called Homespun Rebellion. And then they actually huh. link to, uh, I, I'm guessing so wait, it's the video here, Homespun let see, Rebellion. Let me see if I'm following what you're saying. So they had a really crappy uh, downtown traffic situation. Yes. Um, and then there's a plan to supposedly deal with that. That was Similaris opposed passed that in 2012. But he opposed it? Uh, yes, they don't give the details okay. of it other than like he opposed it. It could have mm-hmm. been that he opposed it because the city was going to go in debt. It, it could, doesn't could be, really yeah. say. Too expensive. Uh, but it says, but don't let the crude plywood sign and musket fool you. And that's reference to things you can see in the video that's linked okay. uh, in this piece. Similaris is not some Don Quixote of small town politics. He gets results. Despite some questionable maneuvering by the Board of Selectmen and setting the date of a special election, Similaris drove out the largest turnout in Balearica history to defeat Curran's center plan. Similaris rode that success to a seat on the board in April 2013. So wait, just to clarify, and, and may, maybe it has to do with Massachusetts town structure or whatever. So the selectmen proposed this plan, and they voted for it. Similaris opposed the plan, but then the town voted to oppose the plan. Am I so the, that there was a uh, vote to where the people of Balearica had to vote to approve this plan. Right. And it was the selectmen who put it to the vote, right? The yes. selectmen said, we want this to, to be voted on. Well, I, I, I don't know if they necessarily said that or uh-huh. if Massachusetts law says, you know, certain things have to go before I the see. people for a vote. But it passed the selectmen. The plan passed the selectmen, then did not pass the it, it either passed the selectmen or did not require their approval to go before the voters. Okay. Uh, and that's something that they don't get into because, you know, this is a Boston magazine. So presumably most of the people reading this are familiar with Massachusetts rules on this. Uh, Similaris saw the corner, or rather the center vote, which overturned an earlier vote by town meeting. So th- this uh, town meeting is something that we yep. definitely understand here in New okay. Hampshire. Uh, Ian, do you want to explain town meeting when we come back? Yeah, we can. I'll do my best. I mean, I don't live in a town, but I, I can explain my best understanding of it. Uh, our toll-free number here is 855-450-FREE if you want to jump into the conversation. This selectman facing criminal charges... For painting, uh, some upkeeping, basically, some, uh, some, ex- some old crosswalks. More coming up here on Free Talk Live. Did you know some countries are now banning GMO foods? It's true. That's why for quality storable foods, you need ready-made resources. For over 19 years, we've become the name you can trust for thousands of products, like Numana Healthy Food Storage. All Numana storable foods are non-GMO, non-soy, and gluten-free available. Call 800-627-3809 or click readymaderesources.com. Ready-made resources. We don't just sell the products, we live it. There are hundreds of silver products on the market today, but there's nothing like the astonishing health benefits of the multi-patented One Silver Solution. Boost your immune system at a great price with our Silver Solution Liquid, starting at $12.95 a bottle, now available in regular and extra strength. That's half the price of the leading competitors. Call 844-USE-SILVER for your free catalog or go to onesilversolution.com, onesilversolution.com. There is only one silver solution. Every once in a while, you get information that's worth changing your life for. This is one such time. You can save up to and beyond 25% on all purchases at Amazon. You probably heard of Bitcoin and just not thought much about it. You certainly know that you can get competitive pricing at Amazon, but now you can get a 25% discount on nearly everything you need to live. I've just given you a huge raise, and all you have to do is claim it. You go to purse.freetalklive.com and open an account. Do this right now. Don't wait. Then you fund the account with Bitcoin. You can buy them through expresscoin.com with a check or money order. There are other ways to get Bitcoin, but that's fast, safe, and easy. This information is worth you changing the way you do things. Go to purse.freetalklive.com right now and get signed up and cash in on the huge raise I'm offering you. 25% off of everything on Amazon through purse.freetalklive.com. It's purse.freetalklive.com. 
I love my magic mud. I drink a lot of coffee. I had stains on my teeth. Then I found my magic mud, and I was told it would remove stains. So I paid attention when I brushed the first time. My magic mud is black tooth powder, and the difference it made in my teeth in one application was noticeable. With four, my teeth were as white as you normal folks out there. Please go to mymagicmud.com and buy a jar. There's 150 applications for 25 bucks. You can use Bitcoin, mymagicmud.com. LRN.FM is proud to announce our official listening apps for Android and iOS devices. Now you can easily tune into our streams anywhere, anytime on your smartphone or tablet. Just visit apps.LRN.FM or search for LRN.FM in the Android or Apple app stores. Please download, rate it five stars, then share the link on social media, and let your friends and family know how you're listening to LRN.FM. Download it now, free at apps.LRN.FM. That's apps.LRN.FM. Our digital freedom is under attack. Look no further than Ross Ulbricht's life sentence to see that. After all, it's not Ross's freedom they're after. It's yours. It is bigger than Ross and bigger than a website. I think one website is by far less dangerous than the government trampling on our rule of law. The appeal is underway, and we've organized a grassroots fundraiser at thecryptoshow.com backslash free Ross. Up for grabs is... Cody Wilson's Ghost Gunner, A Week in Costa Rica, My Magic Mud, Ghost Outside the Machine t-shirt. These prizes are really great. There's a ton more. So go to thecryptoshow.com slash free Ross. Please tell all your friends. Share it up. Our grassroots tactics allow for 100% of all funds raised to go directly to freeross.org. So check out thecryptoshow.com backslash free Ross. And don't forget freeross.org. What's up next? Visit the Liberty Radio Network program guide to find out at shows.lrn.fm. That's shows.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live, and of course, you can dial in here toll-free. You can bring up anything you want. Uh, the number is 855-450-FREE. We've also got Skype at Skype username LRN.FM, so feel free to connect with us in that way if you'd like. Uh, with you tonight in studio, it's Ian. Danica. And Daryl. We've been talking about this uh, this painting case, the situation where a man who's a selectman in Bellarica, Massachusetts, painted some crosswalks that were old, faded, and were big eyesores. People were complaining left and right to him about this. And since the town never bothered to get around to it, he took matters into his own hands. and With his own paint. Yep, and went ahead and painted. He's a professional painter by trade. Went ahead and painted the, the crosswalks and now has been charged criminally for it. And the town wants thousands of dollars out of him. And so we're talking about some of his his history, who this guy is. You've got more to tell about this man. Yes. And uh, you'd asked about the town meeting as right, well. Right, because it, it talks about town meeting. And it's important for people that don't know what town meeting is to understand town meeting. And like that, that's a very unique New England it's, thing. Yeah, it's very New England. It's basically, I think the only state other than one of the New England states that has town meeting is Michigan. Basically, the town meeting allows, for better or for worse, the busybodies in the town to come and affect absolutely everything. And so, again, this can be a good thing if the people in town are liberty-oriented folks. If not, then it can be very, very bad. So it just depends. And so what it what it is is everybody in the town who wants to can go to the town meeting if they're, you know, legal voter or whatever. They and can, able-bodied. Yeah, they can vote on... Pretty much whatever. I mean, the town's budget, all the line items of the the budget. I mean, ev absolutely everything. They can control any ordinances that are proposed or removed. They can all do it just by going and showing up at this town meeting. It's like a once a year kind of thing. That's my understanding. Yes. So in Balerica, the town meeting is essentially the legislative branch. And this is something that Chris Reitman had told me a little bit about because he's a selectman in Alstead. The occasional co-host on Free Talk Live. So let's talk more about the what's happening in uh, Massachusetts here in a moment. I want to go to John. He's on the line in Minnesota. You're on Free Talk Live. Hello, John. Yeah, hi. Um, I think this is a classic case of your slippery slope. Uh, do you remember that saying that those who forget their history are condemned to repeat it? Sure. Mm-hmm. Okay, all I'm saying is that 
Adolf Hitler started out as a painter. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Wait, is that <laughs> true? Yes, and it was basically, and correct me if I'm wrong, basically after he was uh, rejected from art college twice mm. is when he decided that he was going to become a petty I little tyrant, he had gotten, uh, and then he rejected. became a really big, huge, giant tyrant. Wow, if only he'd been accepted to college. Yes, but if you've ever seen any of his paintings, you can understand why was bad, he was huh? not ex- accepted into art college. Wow. Well, that was uh, hilarious, John. Do you have anything else you want to share tonight? No, thank you. Thanks. Great call. Good stuff. So uh, suggesting tongue-in-cheek there that this could be the beginning of the end for Balerica. If they just allow this man to go and paint crosswalks, it could be internment camps next. And next thing you know, people are just going to want to, like, paint bike lanes in the middle of the road. Or and tear down trees for no reason. <laughs> blow up the... Uh, playground yeah. because you know like we, we need a bigger sand pit we don't need these swings let's go to charles he's in west virginia you're on free talk live hello charles hello guys what's on your mind young lady yes sir. sounds like uh the town in uh has took a leave of common sense that's something that seems to be pretty well had in this whole <laughs> country anymore yep that's absolutely true but they, they want their power, you know. They're really interested in keeping their control over people, including their own selectmen, apparently. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. This country is so power-hungry. Uh, Hillary Clinton just lost a few, maybe just a few, top-secret papers. Whether well, that's going to cause us any harm or not, yet to be seen. Depends on what the secret. Oh, are. I doubt it would cause me any harm. I don't care what she does. Well, yeah. it might have been some of her and Bill's top secrets. Yeah, uh, maybe. I don't see how any politician losing paperwork is going to hurt me in any way. Well, you're kind of far away from like I am out here. Yeah, I, I don't concern but, myself with what uh, Hillary or Bill or Bush or... You know, whoever they are pimping out at the moment. Chris Christie, I guess he's coming to Keene next week. Oh, yeah, Uh, he'll he'll be in Keene on Monday. And I've got tickets to his town hall. It's going to be interesting to see if they let me in or not. Yeah. Hey, uh, Charles, thanks for your call tonight, man. I appreciate it. Yeah, the toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. And we've been talking about these. uh, this politician in Balerica, Massachusetts. Heroic guy. Actually took matters into his own hands, finished up some uh, crosswalks, touched them up, made them look nice. Uh, And uh, the picture, it looks nice. He painted it green and white. And, you know, it's real conspicuous, which is what you want for a crosswalk, right? right? You want it to stick out. You don't want it to sort of, like, fade in and blend. And that's how a lot of crosswalks do. They just sort of, like, fade and blend. Sure, they get worn away. And I'm sure the green's a nice touch from white, for sure. Well, it's white and green. Oh, white and green. He painted green over the black in the road and the white. Yeah, they, there's a couple of the crosswalks in downtown Keene where it's sort of a red right. with the white on either side, so it stands out a little yeah, more. Yeah, exactly. That's instead the whole of purpose. just here's a white line on the road, it's here's a white line. Oh, and there's a different color than what the road is. So this article from the Boston Magazine, sort of jumping back just to what to 2012 or something. Uh, where- it starts back at 2012, where it talks about this vote. Uh, it was the, a vote to sort of redo the center of the city traffic right. wise, and this guy led a um, led he, a, he a, led a, a charge vote against no it. campaign, and no one. So then, for some reason, there was a uh, special election. It appears in 2013, where he wound up getting elected to the board of selectmen. Oh, so he wasn't even a selectman when he led that campaign. That's correct. Oh, wow. So he real this guy's really mm. grassroots. I mean, if if you look at that, look at it from that perspective, he, yes, he led a political uh, rally and then used that to parlay himself into a selectman seat. Yes, and he saw the vote on uh, voting down the redo the center of Balerica as a mandate from the people because the people, you know, at town meeting, the people are the legislative branch. So they're the ones that make the decisions. The selectmen are essentially the executives, so they follow those decisions. In theory. Right, in, in theory. Uh, except for when they take matters into their own hands with Mm. no respect for the government process like this guy. Uh, The article continues. It says, In the fall of 2014, Similaris turned his attention to town meeting, which he believed no longer represented the will of the people. 
at its fall session, he presented a Warren article that's basically a initiative referendum sort yep. of thing, a, a bill before the people calling for the formation of an exploratory committee to discuss abolishing town meeting. Whoa. The very body that would be voting on the measure, unsurprisingly, it failed. Then that came, seems pretty extreme. Then came the new high school project. With Balearica Memorial High ever increasingly showing its age, the town decided it would build a new one. And Massachusetts Scholastic Building Authority would foot roughly half the bill as the town's high school building committee whittled down its options for a location to two sites. Similaris resolutely declared that the new building ought to be on the current site. Uh, quote, if you guys pick the site... It's not a threat. I will guarantee use every legal means, whether it's petition like the town center was, anything at all. Mark my words on that. I will work my butt off. A Democratic town committee chairman, George this guy Noble, takes things seriously. says, don't threaten us. <laughs> Similaris responds, it's not a threat. It's a promise. It's a fact. <laughs> he penned a letter to the Sun which he signed George Similaris, Selectman. He made an hour-long video, I mean, which was broadcast on public access television. Hold on. He's not necessarily going to bat for, like, smaller government here. This is just what he wants, right? This is a guy right. who, well, I say we need this new school that's going to be millions of dollars, likely. I mean, when they built a well, new he, school here. He wasn't the one advocating the new school. He was saying it should be where the current school is. Right. But that's not necessarily a cost savings or anything necessarily, right? Because then they're going to have to right. raise the current school and then build a new school in its place. And maybe that would actually cost more. I don't know. Uh, 855-450 free. More about this guy coming up. You can share your thoughts on Free Talk Live. Every once in a while, you get information that's worth changing your life for. This is one such time. You can save up to and beyond 25% on all purchases at Amazon. You probably heard of Bitcoin and just not thought much about it. You certainly know that you can get competitive pricing at Amazon, but now you can get a 25% discount on nearly everything you need to live. I've just given you a huge raise, and all you have to do is claim it. You go to purse.freetalklive.com and open an account. Do this right now. Don't wait. Then you fund the account with Bitcoin. You can buy them through expresscoin.com with a check or money order. There are other ways to get Bitcoin, but that's fast, safe, and easy. This information is worth you changing the way you do things. Go to purse.freetalklive.com right now and get signed up and cash in on the huge raise I'm offering you. 25% off of everything on Amazon through purse.freetalklive.com. It's purse.freetalklive.com. We use mobile devices right against our bodies every day, but growing scientific evidence has emerged showing serious health risks associated with exposure to EMF radiation emitted from these devices. The solution is Defender Shield, the most effective mobile radiation shielding ever developed. Defender Shield blocks virtually 100% of EMF radiation from cell phones, tablets, and laptops and starts at just $64.99. Buy now at DefenderShield.com. For 10% off, use promo code GCN. DefenderShield.com, the worldwide leader in mobile radiation shielding. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. Have you ever wondered why banks, stockbrokers, investment advisors won't talk about gold IRAs? They've been available since 1986, yet the financial industry won't recognize the value of gold for your retirement. Gold has outperformed paper investments, yet no word about IRAs. If you would like to have gold for your retirement, call 800-686-2237. Don't get left behind by rising inflation and low returns. Call 800-686-2237. Secure your future and call 1-800-686-2237. In this week's Onion Tips section, five easy ways to adapt your deplorable and parasitic existence for the upcoming Armageddon. Tip one, focus on preparing your home for any number of disaster situations, which still probably won't take your mind off of your impending death or the myriad mistakes you made in your short, pitiful life. Tip two, make sure your linens are clean prior to the upcoming catastrophe, as these are likely the very same sheets on which you will soon be slowly asphyxiated. Tip three, take some time off work and spend your last days free from the bonds of the oppressive machine that was just about the only thing giving you a purpose to your otherwise insignificant days. Tip four, spend your final waking minutes before the end of the world with your family, knowing full well you'd rather be doing a number of other gratifying yet completely depraved things. Right, sicko? In other news, a smitten foot fetishist thinks these may be the two. A woman and her gay best friend go on another one of their little adventures. And a dead daughter would have wanted a $220 million liability settlement. This is the Onion News Network. 
Free Talk Live has partnered with Amazon, the largest internet retailer. Imagine a department store category, and Amazon has it. Books, electronics, office products, furniture, jewelry, automotive, toys, clothing, sporting goods, and dozens of other categories. Now you can shop and support Free Talk Live by entering Amazon through our website. Go to shop.freetalklive.com, and Amazon will send us a portion of your purchase. You're going to do the shopping anyway, so remember to enter through our site at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. Ross Ulbricht was convicted in early 2015 of running the infamous Silk Road Underground Market. The Silk Road was a gift to humanity and helped reduce the harms brought on by drug prohibition. For this good deed, Ross has been sentenced to life in prison with no possibility of parole. Now, an appeal is Ross's only chance, and he needs your support. Please visit freeross.org, where you can contribute via various methods, including Bitcoin. Visit freeross.org. That's freeross.org. If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. Yeah! We're back now with more Free Talk Live. Of course, you can bring up anything. Toll-free numbers 855-450-FREE. Also, we're discussing the town selectman in Balearica, Massachusetts, who heroically went ahead and painted, uh, repainted so, several, actually, six different crosswalks around town. He'd been getting a bunch of complaints from folks, and just the town manager and the town bureaucrats were just sitting around doing nothing about it. So he went ahead, took matters into his own hands, and was rewarded with two misdemeanor criminal charges, as well as the town manager insulting him and demanding that he pay thousands of dollars to the town to supposedly go clean up his repair work. Uh, Daryl, you've been telling the story about this guy, and you've got a profile piece from Boston Magazine, yes. sort of giving us some of the history. He was elected after uh, sort of a uh, successful political campaign he campaigned against a particular change to the town and was successful, then got elected as selectman, uh, then vehemently opposed a school project, a new new school, or yes. at least op opposed the uh, popular locations for a new school amongst the rest of the selectmen. And that's where we left off. Right. So he made an hour-long video, which was broadcast on public access television, okay. in which he Smart. laid out his case against the other sites. This is a, a very unused resource. Uh, yes. Pro by by many politicians in places, uh, the public access television is a great resource. Daryl, you and I are actually involved as board members of the local public access t uh, television channel here in Keene, New Hampshire. Yes, we are. And there are actually some politicians who are smart enough to utilize this the particular channel here. But I think it's I still think it's an underused resource. It's something that a lot of people watch in these small towns, especially in a place like Keene, New Hampshire where there isn't any kind of local TV besides what's on public access television. Right. There's no local television channel. And even if there was a local TV channel, like there is one in Manchester, for instance, it's not like they're producing much in the way of local content. They've you know? got a local newscast. And that's it. So public access TV is a real place that people can go and for very, very low cost or zero cost, actually get their word out, whatever it is that they're trying, whatever word they're trying to spread. It's a, it's a tremendous resource. I would highly recommend people look into it. Uh, just that's as, as an aside. The video titled, The Balerica Bugle with George Similaris, the selectman's dogs accompany him to each site, providing evidence to every Balerica resident with a television or internet connection of him breaking the town's leash law. <laughs> no. He told the Lowell Sun, I knew this was going to come up. I was near the woods. I let the dogs off the leash for a short time. I had the leash with me. If it's a violation of the leash law, I'll be more careful next time. Meanwhile, folks in town worried that Similaris' antics would scare away the MSBA <laughs> from doing business with Balerica due so, to Similaris speaking out against the project as a selectman, not as a private person. The... The antics, again, using this term. I mean, we hear it all the time here in Keene. You, you, you uh, activists with your antics. Is it antics every time you do anything that's sort of away from the norm? Yes. Is it antics every time you take a position that is yes. not the expected position? Yes. I mean, is it? It's an antic when the guy lets his dog off the leash? I mean, it's yes. just ridiculous. It's so ridiculous. Everything is an antic as long as somebody thinks it's an antic. Right. 
a non-binding petition requesting that Similaris pipe down and allow the process <laughs> to play out garnered roughly I 500 signatures. Superintendent Tim Piowar, directed by the school committee, released an annotated transcript of Similaris's video with 61 corrections and clarifications. Similaris responded, they don't have the facts. I didn't read the 60 corrections, but they don't have the facts. <laughs> I wasn't trying to mislead anybody. In my final salvo before taking this job, writes the author of this piece, I found that three town officials, including Similaris, lived closer to the site he campaigned against than the state ethics commission allows. Huh. Quote, for example, a property owner is presumed to have a financial interest in zoning changes, variances, nearby subdivisions or development approvals, and roadway sewerage or safety improvements. So, just to clarify, what you're saying there is Similaris was the only one of the town council members who didn't have a conflict of interest? Uh, no, Similaris, along with two other town officials. Oh, he did also. Did have a conflict of interest ah. by living within 300 feet of the entrance <laughs> of the property. So it was like what? a zoning issue huh. to where he would have, you know, like had the zoning of his neighborhood changed. So that that's his... the reason that he was advocating so against the new site. Right. Not principal. Okay. Right. Uh they then write, but as he has done at least twice, Similaris wrote a letter to the editor appearing in the March 12th edition of The Sun, which he signed, George Similaris, Balerica Selectman. The same night, he appeared mm. before the building committee, prefacing his public comments with, as a member of the board of selectmen. As my, but he's not allowed to do. That's that's like against the rules. Uh, because he he's not speaking for the board. Well, he's not speaking for the board, but because of the ethics commission rules of having a personal financial interest, mm -hmm. then he should not have spoken at, at all. all. Oh, okay. Or if he did, he should not have said as a selectman. Board oh, interesting. Uh, the so article here rules. concludes, it says, as my... in infinitely more capable replacement Rick Sobey discovered Similaris was on a list of Balerica town officials who had not yet completed a mandatory online conflict of interest exam. Hmm. Whoever keeps track of Apparently that should mandatory. have notified me, he <laughs> told the son. I didn't know about updating the test, but I'm more than happy to do it as soon as possible. I'll be more than happy to do it because my only interest is for the welfare of Balerica residents. And of course I will take care of my duty as a selectman. That, more or less, is who George Similaris is. Got it. While the selectman's intentions are almost always good, his any-means-necessary approach lands him in hot water from time to time. Yeah, of course it will. In a, in a small town situation, I don't know what the population of Balerica is, but I imagine it's yeah, fairly several thousand, if not tens of thousands. It's a name I've heard before. Like, I know that that, right. that place exists. Um, you know, the, these things get very, very intimate. Uh, in these small towns, in places like this. People ver care a lot about their community, and they are, in a lot of cases, willing to you know step forward and, and be heard about this. And obviously, this guy doesn't care about whatever consequences may befall him. And I, I got to say that you know I've got a lot of respect for him. He, he's probably not, like I said, a principled uh, guy in any way, shape, or form. He's just a guy who has certain things he wants to see done in his town, you know? Apparently, there are 40,000 people that live in Balerica, and it is still a town. Mm. Interesting. Well, right. So what happens, Danica, up here is there's different kinds of organizations for towns and cities. So does that mean that Keene is technically a town? No, nope. Keene is a city. So what? it doesn't have Come to do, on. it doesn't have anything to do with population. In fact, there's a town in New Hampshire called Hudson that has more population than Keene does, and Keene is a city. Um, there's also different ways the town structure can be set up. Right. So the town can be set up in a uh, town meeting style. Or it can be set up in a town selectman have more power kind of style. I don't know what you call that. Uh, word, but. The SB2 jurisdiction is sort of a variant of the town. Oh, the one you're talking about, uh, I, I forget what they call that. But yeah, it's basically to where the selectmen act as the city council. Right. That's essentially what happens in, in Hudson from what I understand. So but, all of it is just, I don't know what why you would want to be a city as opposed to a town, it just it seems to centralize more power, but then that other version of the town also has that centralized power. Right. So the the way the Keene School Board operates 
I kind of like uh, as far as the options of uh, local government goes mm-hmm. to where you have what they call the deliberative session to where people show up and then they determine what's going to be on the ballot. Yeah. And then like a month later is when people actually go to the ballot and vote. As opposed to a town meeting where it's only the people who can show up physically to that one meeting. Right. Because you've got people that for various reasons can't show up to the meeting. But for a vote, they could get an absentee ballot or something like that. Get an absentee ballot. You can spare 15 minutes on your lunch break to run over, cast the ballot, and then go back to work. Some more of the subtleties that you learn the longer you're involved in the political process here uh, in New Hampshire. And, of course, the Free State Project, I should mention, just crossed the 17,000 signer threshold. So. 85%? Uh, 85%? That's 85. Yeah, that's right. Uh, we are on the way now to 20,000, closer than ever before. Uh, 20,000 people who are going to sign a statement. We've got 17,000 now. They've signed a statement saying they're going to move to New Hampshire, as the three of us have done, and as over 1,500 other people have already done as early movers and get active to achieve liberty in our lifetime. So to get active within these very accessible political systems where people like this town selectman, you know, it's, there's some similarities between New Hampshire and Massachusetts at the, the town level. Um, and, you know, where people like this who are the, the people who are willing to put the time and the effort in can really have an impact. And we've seen that with our friend Chris, who are, maybe we'll focus on a little bit later because Chris... He's, he was co-host of Free Talk Live a couple of times. Not Cantwell. Chris Not Cantwell, uh, as he's called himself on the air. <laughs> he's had a great impact already as uh, an appointed selectman in his town. So you can really make a difference here. Go to freestateproject.org and learn more about that. Hour number two is on the way. It's Free Talk Live. If worse comes to worst, will you be prepared? You don't have to be a survivalist to prepare for the unexpected. Storing necessary supplies like food, water, and emergency equipment is simply taking responsibility for ourselves and our families when it counts the most. StrategicShelters.com offers emergency supplies and a secure way to store them and provides protection for loved ones in the event of an extreme natural or man-made disaster. To find out more, visit StrategicShelters.com. Kid, let me paint you a picture. Tuesday night, your cog belt goes bust. Who will help you get what you need fast? Without the hoops, hurdles, or headaches? Granger, that's who. I love Granger. They got a wide variety of products and solutions. Granger makes it easy to get everything we need and answers for when we're not sure what the answer is. Now, kid, let me paint you another picture. It looks like a mop, a basement bathroom, and you all over it. Get it? Got it? Good. Call clickgranger.com or stop by. Granger, for the ones who get it done. If worse comes to worst, will you be prepared? You don't have to be a survivalist to prepare for the unexpected. Storing necessary supplies like food, water, and emergency equipment is simply taking responsibility for ourselves and our families when it counts the most. StrategicShelters.com offers emergency supplies and a secure way to store them and provides protection for loved ones in the event of an extreme natural or man-made disaster. To find out more, visit StrategicShelters.com. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number two is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media capital of the world, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Friday, July 24th, 2015. Silver is trading at $14.52 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,082 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $286. 
Antiwar.com reports the recent bombing attack in Sirak, Turkey appears to have been a wake-up call for the Turkish government after months of relative ambivalence about the Islamic State's growth on their southern border. Yesterday, a border clash erupted between the military and the Islamic State forces, leaving at least one soldier slain. One the Islamic State fighter was also killed in the attack that followed. This sudden realization that they have a long border with the Islamic State Caliphate and that this might be a problem has the Turkish military scrambling to secure that border, digging a 365-kilometer ditch along much of the border, setting up reconnaissance drones, and installing some 150 kilometers of modular walls there. The military is also deploying fighter jets and tanks to the border region, anticipating more cross-border attacks by the Islamic State forces, a problem which opposition figures say Turkey wasn't taking seriously until the most recent round of attacks. Turkey has long been the route of choice for the Islamic State recruits to enter the caliphate, and with Turkey Turkey openly endorsing the Syrian civil war, they've done little to prevent the recruits from crossing. This recent tension along the border may serve to slow the Islamic State's recruitment. For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and permanently removed the minimum purchase order for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing and a forward-thinking approach to new technologies. 850-478-5270 or online at rrbi.co. UPI reports British police were again reminded Thursday of Europe's immigration crisis when they discovered the body of a young man on top of a commuter train headed from France to Britain. The body was discovered after the train arrived in the town of Folkestone, though investigators believe he likely died shortly after climbing a top in France. Investigators were not immediately certain of the man's identity or exactly when or how he died. Thursday's discovery follows a rash of other incidents involving migrants traveling across Europe, including one earlier in the month in which three people were injured after officials say they broke into the train's tunnel and tried to stow away. In 2115 New England, there are no borders, no states, and no regulations, yet never has a more peaceful and prosperous place existed. But Mr. Drake Security Company has seen better days. Faced with the prospect of waning power, Mr. Drake intends to replace the anarchy of New England with a government. But at what cost? Will anybody care? And can anyone stop him? Anarchy in New England by Joe Jarvis is available from Amazon.com and all major bookstores. Reuters reports the president of the U.S. military's medical college says he took swift action after he learned in 2013 that John Henry Hagman, a former army doctor teaching there, was injecting students with hypnotic drugs, inducing shock by withdrawing their blood, and performing rectal exams in class. Hagman was escorted off the Uniformed Services University campus in Maryland, and the college quickly offered students blood tests to determine if they had been exposed to any diseases. School president Charles Rice also said the the college launched an internal investigation into Hagman's conduct and it forwarded information to law enforcement authorities and the Virginia Board of Medicine, which revoked Hagman's license last month. Rice said, We took immediate steps, but records reviewed by Reuters, including the university's own investigation, showed that school officials had known of Hagman's teaching methods for more than 20 years. The records also show that three faculty members sat in on Hagman's course in 2012 but did not alert their superiors despite witnessing practices that the school has since banned. One former dean even pushed to have Hagman court-martialed in 1993 over similar allegations. According to the school's internal review dated December 2013, the university's culpability cast a wide net. The document includes 27 pages of finding and 45 exhibits that total more than 350 pages. In sworn statements that are part of the report, unidentified colleagues offered varied descriptions of Hagman, an iconoclast and a cowboy, some Someone who had an almost magical spell-like effect on people, and an officer on a righteous mission impatient with government rules. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. Already struggling to get by on the basic necessities of day-to-day -day life, lunatics across the nation confirmed today that they are now barely able to afford the quickly rising price of car meat. I've got 14 Barbara Streisands to feed and three more on the way. 
Day and night they shout, we're hungry, Admiral. We want grade A on the loaf. We want Nissan truck. I just want to know what Bruno Mars plans to do about this. He sits around all day eating Audi ribeye and limousine bouillabaisse while we scrape by with taxi shanks. Meanwhile, the men at arms are still overseas fighting the war on Wheel of Fortune. For more on this story, check this week's Onion Review. This is the Onion News Network. Free Talk Live. Welcome to the program. It's Free Talk Live, and you can dial in toll-free to share your thoughts here with us. The number is 855-450-FREE, and you don't have to necessarily talk about uh, what we've been discussing, the selectmen of Balearica, Massachusetts, who went and uh, repainted several faded, uh, embarrassing, eyesore crosswalks. And apparently the town manager and police didn't like that very much, so they went ahead and charged him criminally uh, for it. And with you in the studio tonight, by the way, it is Ian here. Danica. And Daryl. We're going to go right into your calls and thoughts. Also coming up tonight, the recruiting centers around the country, a lot of them are being guarded by uh, Oath Keepers and other gun rights advocates. I actually went down there yesterday and interviewed uh, Chris Reitman, who is one of the Oath Keepers in the area, about what he was doing out there and, you know, what the status is. And it's different everywhere, right? Like, you know, the people who are in Keene, New Hampshire are not the same as in elsewhere. And, Daryl, you've got an interesting story about one of these guards. And I don't remember oh, where Oh, he's it was. definitely different. Uh, New York. In New York. So we'll tell you about that here in a little bit. Uh, of course, you can join us first and foremost at 855-450-FREE. Let's start with JR, listening in Charleston, West Virginia. JR, you're on Free Talk Live with Ian Danica and Daryl. Hello. Hi, JR. Go ahead with your thoughts. I heard you mention there, Ian, about hot water and paint lines on the street. And didn't you have a little incident with that? Would you care to elaborate on it? I what don't know what you mean. Uh, chalk marks. Oh, chalking. Yeah. So, I mean, there are a number of people oh. who do chalking here in New in uh, the Keene area. We actually just had Chalk the Police Day uh, this past weekend. So. Uh, and then there are certain people in the area, one in particular who has made a habit of coming out. It's his hobby, basically, to come out and remove all the creative chalkings, regardless of their source. Uh, and he did come out and remove those chalkings, of course. And there, there was also the thing, what was it, last fall, uh, late fall, early winter, the homeless shelter did That's something right. about oh, raise yeah. homeless awareness. And they it was actually a church group. stuff. It was a church group that, that came out to raise awareness for, for homeless Yeah, issues. and they, they chalked messages in Central Square, and this guy went out and scrubbed those off as well. And there was actually a newspaper article written about him doing that. So, uh, yeah, they, I guess that's the issue. There's been some level of conflict here in Keene, New Hampshire, over the last year over simple chalkings, which, of course, is different from uh, you know crosswalks. Chalking is a uh, more ephemeral ex form of expression. It's something that you know is not going to last. It's going to wash away at the next rain, for instance. But you uh, could chalk your own crosswalk, and then that would just be anarchy because there'd be all these crosswalks in. <laughs> right. <laughs> Jr. Anything else you want to share? Go ahead. What do the powers in charge, the powers that be, think of this? The chalking or the crosswalk? The chalking. Oh, well, some of them don't like it. There was actually one city councilor who uh, actually ended up getting uh, some news headlines last year because he was proposing a ban on all chalking in the downtown area. Right, because he wanted to label it as graffiti and therefore to ban it. And it didn't go anywhere. So that, you know, the, I don't think the city, uh, I think he actually turned it over to like the city attorney to come up with pro potential proposed language or to research it or something like that. And right. I don't think it's ever come back on and the table. Uh, Manchester actually has an ordinance that includes a definition for graffiti stick, and it is Which written in such a poor manner that if you have a large piece of chalk, that is a graffiti <laughs> stick, oh my which gosh. is basically evidence that you might be doing graffiti and could wind up getting you arrested. JR? What do you think about the theater, our largest theater shooting. 
Oh, yeah, that's big in the news right now. I didn't even think about that one. Uh, it's just, uh, well, what do you think about it? It's, it's an un another unarmed location, right? Or wh Where was this? This was Louisiana. So I guess you could be... Yeah, you, you could legally concealed carry into a movie theater, I would think. Uh, Unless the movie theater has a sign that says no weapons. Yeah. That's, uh, which no most weapons. of them do. No weapons. Criminals, come on in. We're yeah. free. JR, thank I'm with you, you on that, man. The, definitely want to get rid of the gun gun-free zones, and I thank you for the call tonight. Of course, just because it says no weapons doesn't mean that no one has any weapons obviously or it's going to stop them from bringing yeah. weapons in Come on. Some, right I and mean, there's nobody uh scanning you with a metal detector to get into the movie theater so if you wanted to concealed carry into the movie theater you can leave you know, i mean it would be legal for you to do that It'd just be a dis disrespecting the property owner's wish but in this case i imagine the property owner would have been very happy had somebody actually shot back at uh the guy who apparently took two people's lives and then took his own life when did this happen? Because I, like I yesterday, I think. Okay, somehow night, I have not heard about this one. Yeah, I honestly haven't looked much further into it beyond knowing that it was in Louisiana and three people, including the gunman, are dead and two people were the victims. That's that's my understanding. Please correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, if you know more, you're welcome to join us here. Uh, toll free at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. We've got Skype at Skype username lrn.fm. But it does bring up the issue of gun-free zones. Yes. And so there's the kind of a gun-free zone where it's just the private property owner who doesn't want you to carry a gun or doesn't want you to have a weapon. Like, I mean, I've got some, uh, for instance, would a, a can of pepper spray be considered a weapon? I think some people would consider it a weapon. Others would say that's, you know, a defensive tool or whatever you can't, you can't really do too much that's offensive with pepper spray. You're not going to kill somebody with it. It's going to hurt You're not a going lot. to kill somebody, yeah. but you can use pepper spray in an offensive manner yeah, instead of a defensive can. manner. It's going to ruin somebody's day, but it's, you know, they're going to get better pretty relatively quickly compared to, say, a gunshot wound <laughs> well, or a stabbing. Well, assuming that all you do is pepper spray and walk away, yeah. but... Generally, you use pepper spray to blind someone so that you can then do more damage to them. Or get away. Well, right, because generally pepper spray is used in a defensive manner. Right. Um, and But if it is used in an offensive manner, just the simple use of the pepper spray is not going to leave the permanent damage that a, a stab wound or a, right. a bullet hole would do. And so, uh, well, so let, a, let me ask this question: yeah. Have you ever been sprayed with pepper spray? No, or thank goodness. Oleo resin capsicum. No, oh, no thank goodness, no. Never. Not interested in that either. Derek J has though. It is one of the worst things ever. Oh, I bet. Uh, that's what I've heard. Yeah, it, it's absolutely horrible. No doubt about it. But uh, I don't. I think I, if I had to choose, I'd rather be sprayed down by pepper spray than shot in the leg or something or stabbed, like that. Absolutely. Yeah, or stabbed. <laughs> Just yes. saying. Uh, so my point being that, you know, there's the two, two kinds of gun free zones. There's the gun free zone where a business owner is requesting that you not bring in a weapon. Right. And then there's the gun free zone where the government will kidnap you and put you into a cage if you have a weapon yes. in that zone. And we're talking about the latter specifically as far as these, uh, military recruiting centers, which have been in the news. There was a different shooting, as you may know, if you've been paying attention to the news in Chattanooga, Tennessee, where uh, a f couple people, I think, died, as I understand it. Four or five. Several people. I, I think initially four people were dead on the scene, and then... A fifth one died, A right? fifth one died a couple days later from injuries sustained afterwards. And it actually, uh, it was some, but, you know, some nutcase attacking a military recruiting center, and shortly thereafter, men with guns, and maybe some women, uh, showed up at various different recruiting centers around the country. I don't know at how many centers this is happening, but I know it's happening at at least a few here in New Hampshire, and I've heard elsewhere around the country it's going on. You've got a story about one in New York. Uh, Daryl, do you want to tell us about that, and then we'll get to the more serious piece? Yeah, so there's this <laughs> guy in New York, and I'm guessing New York City because it doesn't specify, but he is decked out in full Renaissance Fair regalia. Oh, boy. <laughs> A New York man. This chain is mail. From rawstory.com. He does have chain mail around his head. How many swords? Uh, I don't see any swords. Oh, okay. Uh, right but he is holding a Knights Templar flag. Hmm. Uh, a New York man has joined hundreds of patriots who have appointed themselves defenders of U.S. military recruitment centers. Holding the flag of the Knights Templar and wearing a 10-pound steel helmet, 
Jeffersonville resident Joseph Fry says he wants to protect personnel at the military centers following the shooting at a Chattanooga recruitment office. He said service members should be protected. They volunteered to protect us, so I'm just trying to put heat on the issue. I'm just imagining, you know, like the kooky music that you might hear behind this kind of story on like a Colbert Report or a yeah. Penn & Teller's BS or something like that. <laughs> Apparently the guy's a former Marine. But he's dressed up like he's some sort of knight in the Templar Knights. Yeah, says All he right. does not have a permit to carry a handgun. Oh, so he's not armed? All right, we'll come back with more here in moments. This is Free Talk Live. Every once in a while, you get information that's worth changing your life for. This is one such time. You can save up to and beyond 25% on all purchases at Amazon. You probably heard of Bitcoin and just not thought much about it. You certainly know that you can get competitive pricing at Amazon, but now you can get a 25% discount on nearly everything you need to live. I've just given you a huge raise, and all you have to do is claim it. You go to purse.freetalklive.com and open an account. Do this right now. Don't wait. Then you fund the account with Bitcoin. You can buy them through expresscoin.com with a check or money order. There are other ways to get Bitcoin, but that's fast, safe, and easy. This information is worth you changing the way you do things. Go to purse.freetalklive.com right now and get signed up and cash in on the huge raise I'm offering you. 25% off of everything on Amazon through purse.freetalklive.com. It's purse.freetalklive.com. In the U.S. alone, a home invasion occurs every 13 seconds. On top of that, the average response time for 911 is over 15 minutes. That just won't cut it. Don't allow yourself or the important people in your life to be victims. When seconds matter, don't be caught stumbling for your firearm. Get the protection you deserve. Get yourself a Hidden Holster from HiddenHolster.com. It's the original Hidden Holster. The Hidden Holster is quick, easy, and convenient. It's versatile enough for the home, workplace, or virtually anywhere else you might need it. Have peace of mind with your firearm close by at all times. Go to HiddenHolster.com. That's HiddenHolster.com. If you own a firearm, you need a Hidden Holster. Your protection matters, and self-defense is the best defense. Go to HiddenHolster.com. That's HiddenHolster.com. The original Hidden Holster. What if the key to achieving liberty in your lifetime was to move together with others who think like you? Liberty activists are joining the Free State Project, which is over 85% of the way to its goal of 20,000 participants. And they're already making the move to New Hampshire. The successes are piling up and are proving the Free State Project is a real movement and no longer just a great idea. When you're planning your move, consider Keene. Keene is famous for its civil disobedience and non-cooperation, and there's plenty of political opportunity as well. If you're a regular reader of FreeKeene.com, you know there's a lot going on in Keene. Keene is the liberty media capital of the world, with television, talk radio, and more all originating here. Though it's more than just activism, with regular social events each week. See what's happening at freekeen.com and get connected with video, audio, free books, a forum, and activist tools you can download and use in your area at freekeen.com. That's freekeen.com. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. So you've signed the Shire Society Declaration and are planning your move to New Hampshire to be around more liberty-oriented people. Next, sign up for the Shire Society Forum at forum.shiresociety.com. There are a bunch of people there who are already in the Shire, and they want to meet you. If you're already in the Shire physically, you should also come by the forums. Remember, not everyone uses Facebook. New people are signing up for the Shire Society Forum every month, so drop in and say hello at forum.shiresociety.com. You can watch the LRN Studio Cam and chat with other listeners anytime at cam.lrn.fm. That's cam.lrn.fm. Back. 
Back now, more Free Talk Live, continuing where you can control the airwaves. Uh, at least for a moment, you can bring up anything you want to discuss. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. You do not have to necessarily talk about the town selectman illegally painting crosswalks in his own town and then being charged criminally, or as we're discussing, uh, gun-free zones at the military recruiting centers. Now, I actually went out to the local military recruiting center here yesterday and did an, a video interview with one of the guys who was down there. And I've got the, the audio track, and we can play that here in a little bit. But we're uh, telling you about a Knights Templar. Apparently, they are still around. And one of the members was out at the military recruiting center in somewhere in New York. What was the town uh, in New York, Daryl? Do you have that uh, handy? They mentioned a couple different places. They mentioned Jeffersonville and then uh, Middle Middletown. Or both mentioned, so I'm not sure exactly where uh, this began, but I'll tell you why Middletown is mentioned when we get back to the story. All right, we'll do that here in a moment. Also, you can join us at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Also, Skype in. Username there is lrn.fm. With you tonight, it's Ian. Danica. And Daryl. ExpressCoin is the best choice for getting your cryptocurrency. Bitcoin, Litecoin, Dogecoin. It's fast, safe, easy, and inexpensive. And they're a licensed money services business. So they've gone and jumped through those government hoops. You don't have to worry about that. Uh, you can get your cryptocurrencies with money order or check. Whether you're in the U.S. or Canada, they can help you at expresscoin.com. You can also, by the way, save big time on up to $40 worth of cryptocurrency. Normally, it's a 3% transfer fee over at ExpressCoin, but if you use code FTL, 0% transfer fee on up to 40 bucks. Pretty awesome deal. Go and try it out for yourself. I've used them. ExpressCoin.com, coupon code FTL, like Free Talk Live. Let's go to the phones to the fun. Tony, listening in South Carolina, you're on Free Talk Live. Go ahead, Tony. Hey, Ian and Mark. How are you doing? I can't Mark's actually anyway. not here, but uh, Danica and Daryl are in the studio with me tonight. Danica. Well, oh, hi, everybody. Go um, ahead, sir. This is my third time listening to you. I called in the first night I listened to you. Um, the gentleman was talking about concealed carry. Yes. And, you know, in a theater, that kind of thing. Um, and it sounds like you guys understand personal property rights, liberty, freedom, the Mises.org thing, and, you know, all that going on. Um, I'm in South Carolina, and Title Code 53 it specifically says that everybody has the right to exclude, you know, firearms from their property, including businesses. Um, yep, they sure do. Business, but for a business to do that, they have laws they have to follow as well. Um, they have to place a sign that's, you know, a certain size with one inch black letters with a pictogram of a gun with a red, red circle with a red red line through it. Mm -hmm. Those have to be placed at every entry door to the facility, not just one door. It has to be put on every door that anybody could enter. Makes sense. Um, um, if they don't follow that, then they're not expressing their wish not to have concealed carry. I mean, I, yeah, I mean, you've got to let your customers know. Otherwise, the, perf the default is whatever's legal. All right. I worked at a place you got to go through the guard shack. Well, you go to the guard shack, there's a big brick building with black letters painted in it says no concealed weapons allowed. It doesn't have a pictogram. It's not the right size, and the letters are all wrong. So I carry. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, I mean, it could, be, it could be the company's wish that I didn't carry, but mm -hmm. they didn't follow the law of South Carolina. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I mean, li literally had. I don't blame anybody right for time. concealed carrying in a place where, you know, they feel like they might be in danger. Like, the, there's this uh, military recruiting center, which is a gun free zone, um, but they're not checking people for weapons at the door. And so what's the harm in that case of, I mean, obviously you're going to violate the federal government in that case and they'll put you in prison. But, you know, if it was just a regular business and you're quietly ca concealing uh, your weapon on the premises, you know, yes, technically that is a violation of the business owner's wishes, but it's not really violating any you know, the customers aren't going to be angry about it. If you open carry, then obviously the customers are going to be upset. And a lot of those rules are really based more on what the customers will perceive than what the business owner actually believes or, or cares about. Right, right. Well, I just want to let you know that, you know, unless that's sign, at least in South Carolina, and I know my permits, you know, yep. good in North Carolina, Kentucky, Tennessee, 17 other states. Um, so those laws are probably the same there too, as well. So thanks for well, sharing your story sign, and your thoughts they tonight, Tony. They don't have it. I appreciate hearing from you. Let's talk to Chris. He's in Indiana. You're on Free Talk Live. Hello, Chris. 
Hey, how are you doing tonight, Ian? Oof, uh, doing good. Hopefully your phone's doing a little better. Go ahead. Hello. <laughs> Can you hear me all right? Yeah, go yes. ahead. Okay, um, I have just a bit of a, a question for you guys, what, what recommendation you would make. And it's maybe, maybe a Bitcoin question or maybe another alt currency question. Um, I have a friend who studied in the U.S. and then returned to their home country in Iraq. Um, they're Kurdish. And um, they have a job and they're earning a pay- paycheck being paid in um, the Iraqi currency, in Mars. But the banking system doesn't allow uh, in Iraq. It's not very safe. You don't really trust banks in Iraq. Um, just what, from a, a alt currency or a cryptocurrency, what options would there be just for someone in a country like that to, uh, you know, hold on to that wealth or hold on to the paychecks that they're earning? Are you asking how someone in Iraq can get Bitcoin or what other options besides Bitcoin there are? No, just a recommendation. Just um, understand they, you know, they are able to buy Visa cards and can buy into Bitcoins that way. But just in general, um, of all the cryptocurrencies, and including Bitcoin. I, I would what, ask uh, the question. Uh, what's, what's the, a recommendation on um, how you would go. I wouldn't recommend anything besides Bitcoin, personally. That's well, I, I would ask what the person is trying to use he something other line. than a bank for. Because, you know, like, if you just want to store your money but still be able to go shop at your local grocery store, if you're in the middle of Iraq, you know, chances are your local grocer isn't taking Bitcoin. Right. So, right. like, you know, turning your entire paycheck into Bitcoin... On the one hand, yes, you're preventing like the Iraqi government from seizing your money out of the bank. Well, but at the same time, you're then yep. turning your Bitcoin and or your money into something that can't be used where you are. It would be like if I went and traded all of my money into euros. Well, yeah, I'm then protected against American inflation, but it does me absolutely no good. So I got a couple ideas. First of all, I wouldn't do anything besides Bitcoin if you're looking at cryptocurrencies. The other ones, there's too many other altcoins and there's no real winner besides Bitcoin. Uh, Bitcoin is used. It's used around the world. And, and maybe it's used in some places in Iraq. I mean, I haven't looked at the coin map, so I don't know, you know what is available over there, nor is that necessarily the most accurate representation of what's available. If you're looking at storing uh, wealth, obviously gold and silver are great options. You can go to uh, gold.freetalklive.com. You can order some gold from Midas Resources or silver. Uh, silver is a little easier to afford. So those are good classic ways to store value over time. And obviously you don't want to put all your eggs in one basket. So it might be good to have some Bitcoin and some silver uh, in addition to the Iraqi dinars. Right. So, you know, I, I think you want to keep some money in the banks so you can keep doing business in Iraq easily. You obviously don't want to store all your money with the, the banks, in my opinion, because then it could easily come in and, and take it. I would it. suggest maybe using Bitcoin at gift and using some of the, the, the gift cards that can be used in the area of Iraq. There may be If limited, there is anything on gift there is, in, yes. in Iraq. That's a good, good point. Uh, so we can continue here in moments. I've got another suggestion. 855-450-FREE if you want to throw one out there as well. It's Free Talk Live. This is Dan Pilla. Do you owe the IRS money you can't pay? Are tax debts crippling you? I've defended people from the IRS for over 30 years. I've helped thousands and I can help you too. I wrote the book on IRS settlement and I'm telling you, there's no such thing as a hopeless case. Call 800-34-NO-TAX to finally get free of IRS debt. With the IRS's new programs, there's never been a better time to solve your problem. Call 800-34-NO-TAX. That's 800-34-NO-TAX or my website, danpilla.com. Paid non attorney spokesperson Adam Pulaski of the Pulaski Law Firm with principal office in Houston, Texas is the attorney responsible for the content of this ad. This ad is not legal advice and the choice of a lawyer should not be based solely upon advertisement. Services may not be available in all states. Attention Zarelto users. If you or a loved one took Zarelto and suffered a serious bleeding event, you may be entitled to financial compensation. Zarelto is a popular prescription blood thinner used to prevent blood clots and protect patients from strokes. These serious bleeding events have led to numerous cases of hospitalization and even death. Phone lines are open 24 7. Call 800 261 0937. That's 800 261 0937. Since time began, tyrants have taken aim at personal liberties. Now there's a movie that aims back. The government has no more right to tell us what to put in our bodies than they have to take our guns or tell us what books we can read. 
Six drug police were eaten by bears while raiding a marijuana farm. On your knees, you dirty hippies! Jesus. On your knees! Officer. Today, many cops who enforce pot laws do so only because it provides them with cushy jobs, good benefits, and a chance to push people around. I was an undercover narcotics officer. The drug war is nothing but a farce. The Second Amendment says you got to keep you and your gat intact. Guns and Weed, The Road to Freedom. A film by Michael W. Dean and Nima Vidati. DVD available now at gunsandweed.com or on Amazon. That's gunsandweed.com. Makes the perfect gift. Remember, that's gunsandweed.com. Why are you playing a slot machine sound for an online poker site? Do you have a poker sound effect? Because we have a new advertiser, swcpoker.eu. Brought to you by the same guys that did seals with clubs. Now they're called swcpoker.eu. It's Bitcoin Poker 2.0. They have lots of new games, including Chinese poker. The Krill leaderboard is active now. It's Bitcoin Poker from the brand you trust, swcpoker.eu. Get on over to swcpoker.eu and start playing now. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. The warning signs. At first, he made me feel special. He promised he'd look after me, provide for my future. He broke every promise he made. Millions of Americans afflicted. I was ready to leave, but he told me he'd change. So I gave him another chance. I was such a fool. The consequences. Things only got worse. He started making my decisions for me, about my job, my kid's education, my money my safety, my future. He took away my choices, but I kept going back to the same politicians. The diagnosis, battered voter syndrome. I fell for the same old lies. They were just playing with my emotions, telling me what I wanted to hear. That's not right. Stop the insanity of voting for the same old abusers. Declare your independence from the two-party system and join the New Hampshire Liberty Party today at nhliberty.info. You're listening to the best Liberty-oriented audio streamed around the clock, on the air, and online. This is the Liberty Radio Network at lrn.fm. Back now, more Free Talk Live here. You can join us. The toll-free number is... 855 450 free. That's 855 450 3733. We've also got Skype. You can Skype in at username lrn.fm. We're going to talk more about the folks that are standing guard outside of recruitment centers. Apparently, uh, there was another, I guess one of these guys was threatened with arrest if he didn't leave the property in another city. And I'm sorry, I don't remember where that one was. And then Daryl's got a story about a man wearing a Knights Templar costume. Uh, which is, of course, hearkening back to these people who apparently slaughtered Muslims in the past. Honestly, I not followed that story closely, but it sounds like Daryl knows a lot about that. So we'll, we can share more about that with you here in moments. Uh, also, uncovering the secrets and exposing the lies. That's what the readers of freedomsphoenix.com get every day. Readers of freedomsphoenix.com are constantly provided the detailed real news that lies between the lines of propaganda and the relationship we have with coercive governments. Freedomsphoenix.com has up-to-the-minute updates on the economy, technology, communications, and the rise of the police state. Go now to freedomsphoenix.com. You can sign up for their free daily dispatch. Again, that's freedomsphoenix.com. We were talking with a gentleman a moment ago. He was asking about a friend in Iraq who is uh, looking for ways to store his wealth. Um, doesn't necessarily want to keep all of his money in the Iraqi dinar currency. And so what were some other options for him? Well, obviously, Bitcoin is an option. That's one thing you can do. I don't know you know, if there are any Bitcoin vending machines in Iraq that you could easily go and turn dinars into uh, Bitcoin, that's one way to do it, at least in a lot of places in the world. Even uh, Athens, they just got their own Bitcoin uh, vending machine there. 
So, I, in fact, I haven't heard any updates from Greece recently. I don't know if anybody's been following what's been happening there, but I'd love to know what the latest is on the I Greece believe situation. the Eurozone decided to give them some kind of bailout package of like $86 billion over the next couple of years. I'm sure that'll go splendidly for them. Uh-huh. Yes. Given that they haven't paid back the other $380 billion or whatever it was. Um, so, you know, there, there's that option of turning your money into Bitcoin. And of course there are other ways to do that. There's people locally who will sell them to you. There's a website called local Bitcoins. If you're in the U S or Canada, it's easy with expresscoin.com and there are a variety of other choices. So Bitcoin's one option, but I was thinking about the wage can as a possibility, right? So, yes. so the concern is, okay, the government's going to come in, they're going to take money out of your bank account. That's certainly a concern in Greece where there was talk about a 30% haircut on anybody that had a bank account of over 8,000 euros. And haircut meaning they steal your money. Right. Uh, yeah. So, you know, that's, that's, there's a real concern, right? You, you only want to put in a bank account what you can afford to have the government take from you, basically. Yes. Now what's, the, what's the worst you could afford to lose? Put that in the bank account and then use that to pay your bills and stuff like that. Now, this wage can card, I think, is a real good option. I don't know how international they've gone with wage can yet. It's an international Nor do com- I. It's an international company. It's based out of uh, Taiwan, I believe. The bank they deal with is in Hong Kong. Yes. Wage can's offices, I think, are in San Francisco. So it's definitely an international company, and I suspect they will accept applications from all around the globe. I don't see anything on their website specifically forbidding anyone in a particular country from applying for a wage can card. But basically what a wage can card is, is a MasterCard. So it's usable at the hundreds of thousands or millions or whatever MasterCard accepting locations. Any place that will accept an international MasterCard can take wage can. And so far in my experience with wage can, and they're, they're not an advertiser on Free Talk Live. I've just, you know, Daryl, you and I have one of these yes. things. Danica, I don't think you do, right? No, I want to get one, I think. I, I had heard about it. I believe John and Kent Bush were here and yep. at the same time that they were talking about it. With the CEO it. of the company. Yeah. Right. I didn't realize he was the CEO. They I gave just me thought he was some guy that was like really excited about, hey, here's right. this new debit card thing. It's just a nice man from Taiwan. I wanted to wait and see how it played out, but you guys seem to like it and yes. it goes really well, right? It's we, gone we well can so far. Yeah. Go go over it during the top of the hour. Well right there's on. there's risk involved. I plan on going over some of it right now. I mean there's sure. there's there's some risk involved, right? You are dealing with a foreign company and right. you know, if they if they sh- close up shop tomorrow night, your uh your money's going to be gone. I mean, it's not going to be worth enough. All of to, Mount Gox. <laughs> well, all of whatever. All of any company that you know you are is without you know it's outside of your arm's grasp. You can't touch these people. They're somewhere else in the world, and to bring some sort of suit against them would require hiring an attorney. And if you've got five hundred dollars in your wage can account, you know the first hour of the attorney is probably going to eat most of that up. So right. it's just not. It wouldn't make sense to do anything about that. So there is the risk involved of hey. You know, you have no recourse if the company just decides to fold overnight. But all that said, so far, it's been working well. And it's a it's a MasterCard to tell you more about what it is and why this might help the guy in Iraq. Right. Uh, or anybody that doesn't want to keep money in a bank account locally. It allows you to spend your Bitcoin as cash. So what you do is you load the card with Bitcoin. You can't deposit cash into the card. You take your Bitcoin, you send it to an address that is associated with the card, and then in about a day or so, business day, they will take that Bitcoin, convert it into U.S. dollars, and then load that as a prepaid amount onto this this card that looks like a credit card. And Ian, I have to correct you. Please. You said that you cannot load cash onto it. I did that really? very thing a couple days ago. How? Bitcoin vending machine scanned my QR code. And then put cash into the Bitcoin vending machine. Wow. So the cash cool. essentially became Bitcoin on my debit card. Yeah. Okay. I see what you're saying. If, for you, it was like loading cash on. But what really happened was you fed cash into the Bitcoin vending machine. The Bitcoin vending machine sold Bitcoin to you at 5% above the cost right. of Bitcoin. And then immediately transferred that Bitcoin into the wallet of right. this, uh, but this I had wage cash. can account. And now I have money on my wage can account. I see what you're saying. You yourself never held the Bitcoin itself. Right. Uh, if you want to say it that right. way. Right. So if there's a Bitcoin vending machine somewhere near you, yep. you can use that to turn cash into 
that's fines true. on your card at whatever the percentage would be, right? So right. the Bitcoin vending machines around the world charge different percentages, right? Uh, but you know, five percent is fairly still, typical for the convenience. Yeah, sure, sure. And and then I think Wage Can charges a one and a half percent on a load. I think that's the that's the only fee they take out. And that's one of the things I was looking for on Wage Can was I thought, all right, they're gonna get you with the fees. They're gonna be nickel and diming you to death with this thing. They, they and, get you on fees if you withdraw cash from an ATM. Which you pretty much get hit anytime you withdraw cash from right. an ATM unless it's with your home bank, right? Right. So that's not atypical. Uh, but yeah, so there's a fee there. You're right about that. But the only other fee they have, uh, if you look at their fee schedule, is just the initial load of the card. Once the cash is on the card, there's no additional uh, hits to using that card. You know, if I go to Walmart and I buy a $10 item with the wage can card and then I look at my balance or whatever, it's going to have $10 taken out. Yes. So... So for the guy in Iraq or for anybody who wants to keep money out of a bank account, this works because it's completely out of the purview of whatever government you, wherever you are in the world, unless you happen to live in Hong Kong. What about purse? Like, could he use purse or is that a Purse isn't going to store wealth. I mean, that's just a way to buy but things he on can use Amazon. It, he can use it to, oh, I, I guess that would work too. I mean, purse is a cool thing. There's no doubt about it. You can buy things on, on Amazon for 20% off by using Bitcoin. At purse. Well, Amazon is selling com, food, so he could certainly use it to purchase food. It, it what now? But, and, well, Amazon does sell food on it. So yeah, but they don't want. sell like uh, you know perishable food. They sell stuff that you can keep on a shelf True. for a long yeah. time. Um, but you, you could use uh, your wage can Mastercard at any marketplace that accepts that's true uh, Mastercard. So that's a way to keep money out of a bank account. And yet still have it accessible to you to where you don't have to ask every merchant, hey, do you accept Bitcoin? You can just pull out your wage can card. You accept MasterCard and virtually every place does. Almost every place, yeah. yeah. I mean, unless we're talking about Iraq and, you know, in the marketplace where somebody selling on the the corner of the street just takes dinars. then Right. So I'm not saying get out of dinars completely, but there are a lot of options. And as, as the Bitcoin economy matures and we start seeing more innovative solutions like the wage can card... It'll get even easier to, I think, disconnect yourself from local bank accounts and things like that. And so, the again, the wage can card is backed by a bank in Hong Kong. So as long as you live outside of Hong Kong, there's no government necessarily that has jurisdiction over that particular card. So we'll come back in with more theory. here in a moment. In theory, right. We're on the way here. 855-450 free. This is Free Talk Live. This is a life-changing message for anyone with sleep apnea who is on the go and tired of dragging around a big, bulky home CPAP device. MiniCPAP.com now offers a portable device that's as small as a soda can and weighs less than a pound. For even more freedom, you can add a battery that's as tiny as a deck of cards. It's called the Transcend Mini CPAP. And right now, you can try it risk-free for 21 days by calling 1-800-939-8536. Transcend is the world's first portable mini CPAP device. It gives you the freedom to sleep in total comfort anywhere you are. Our smallest and most advanced portable design ever. Transcend is so small and so light you can fit it in your briefcase or purse to use anywhere you go. It's FAA compliant too, so you can even sleep comfortably while flying. Enjoy the freedom to sleep comfortably anywhere. Call minicpap.com now for your 21-day in-home trial. 1-800-939-8536. That's 1-800-939-8536. Now, a twice as nice twin kit special offer from Complete H2O Minerals for all GCN listeners. Get a Complete H2O Minerals twin kit with 33 different minerals, vitamins, and amino acids all in a liquid form. Enough for two people for one month. Regular price $89.95, but now Complete H2O Minerals is offering the twin kit for $69.95. And all GCN listeners receive a bonus 16-ounce bottle of Ionic Silver absolutely free with free shipping. A $120 total value. Hurry, limited time offer. Call 803-794-4767 or click CompleteH2OMinerals.com. By now you know that wireless technology like cell phones do in fact pose dangers to the health and privacy of everyone. Blockit Pocket's wide range of products are unmatched in providing the protection you deserve. No scare tactics, just common sense. BlockitPocket.com offers quality American-made options to alleviate and eliminate these invisible dangers. Learn more at BlockitPocket.com or call 888-315-9618. BlockitPocket.com, enhancing health and privacy. Why did you move to the Shire? I moved here to the Shire because there's other people around who take liberty just as seriously as I do. 
I moved to the Shire because I saw videos of people challenging authority and thought that I could get support myself. It called to me, like, do this right now. I wanted to be around people like me who got it. And once I got here, I knew there was nowhere else that I wanted to be. I've always wanted to change the world. So I moved to the Shire to join people who were actually working towards doing the same thing. The people here are awesome, loving, and positive. It was for the adventure and for the feeling of something important is happening here. And I just wanted to come to sort of be part of that. Visit ShireSociety.com to read and sign the Shire Society Declaration and learn the reasons why, if you love liberty, you should immigrate to the Shire. Plus, add yourself to the Shire map at ShireSociety.com. That's ShireSociety.com. LRN.FM is proud to announce our official listening apps for Android and iOS devices. Now you can easily tune into our streams anywhere, anytime on your smartphone or tablet. Just visit apps.LRN.FM or search for LRN.FM in the Android or Apple app stores. Please download, rate it five stars, then share the link on social media, and let your friends and family know how you're listening to LRN.FM. Download it now, free at apps.LRN.FM. That's apps.LRN.FM. Should you be able to earn an honest living free from senseless government interference? The Institute for Justice thinks so. That's why we've spent years defending hard-working men and women from pointless government regulations. Nationwide, IJ has created opportunity by reducing government power. But there is still more work to be done. Visit our website today at ij.org. Let IJ take care of the government so you can take care of your business. While our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip-in on the right side of the page at lrn.fm. We are back with more Free Talk Live. You, of course, can join us here toll-free. 855 free And with you in the studio tonight is Ian. Danica. And Daryl. We've been talking about storing your wealth, some alternatives besides just socking money away in a bank account and waiting for the day when the government comes and raids it, which they can either do as just an attack across all of society, as we saw in Cyprus, where, what was it, a 45% hit or something like that? Uh, something like that. Yeah, where they just went and they just raided uh, accounts. And I think the the amount that you had to have in uh, storage of euros was like over 100,000 there. It was it was a fairly high uh, floor. But uh, in Greece, they're talking about, they were talking about hitting accounts with over 8,000 euros with 30% uh, haircut, as they were oh calling it. Gosh. So they can either do it and you know across all of all bank accounts, or they can just target you and take all of your money out. They can do that anytime they want right. to in the IRS. In, in theory, well, not just the IRS could be any government agency. Sure. They could just seize all of your money and then say, "Well, we think it was connected to something illegal. Prove it wasn't." Ha yep. ha ha. Good luck with that. Mm -hmm. uh, but I, I was going to say, in theory, and this is completely in theory. There's no pending legislation to do this but in theory in the u.s they could seize anything over the fdic threshold of what's insured and just mm. say all right it's ours now you're not insured on this it's ours ha -ha. well i'm sure the fdic wouldn't be insuring your account if in the event that they decided to give everybody a haircut the insurance would likely not apply in that instance right but all all the feds would have to do is just take whatever's above what's insured because right now they insure up to 250,000. So they could yeah. just say everything over 250,000 in a bank account is now ours. They could or they could just say, "Oh, we'll just take however much we want and the FDIC will not do anything about it because we're in charge of them." Yeah, right. in theory they yeah. could do that too. <laughs> Screw you. I I'm just saying the way that would wind up, you know, causing less paperwork for government bureaucrats. Or they could have the FDIC change the maximum they insure because they did change that recently. If you recall, it went up from a hundred thousand to two hundred. That, that was changed by mm. uh, legislative decree. Mm. So that that wasn't just the FDIC saying we're uh, doing this. That was Congress telling the FDIC you're now insuring up to two hundred and fifty thousand. Yeah. So so perhaps they. But could Congress could say, okay, one. you're only insuring ten thousand, and everything over ten is ours. 
All right, so our toll-free number here tonight is 855-450-FREE. Did, uh, there was more to say, I think, Daryl, about the man in the Knights Templar outfit yes. uh, in New York guarding outside of the military recruitment center? Yes, so he did not have a firearm because he says he does not have a carry permit. However, he did have a bow and a quiver full of arrows. Whoa. Uh, Raw Story says that may come as a small relief to military officials who have asked armed civilian guards to stay away from their centers. On Thursday, a man in Lancaster, Ohio, who was guarding one of the centers, accidentally fired a round into the asphalt mm. from his AR-15. Wow. <laughs> officials' relief may be short-lived, however, with Fry... Fry being the man dressed as the Knights Templar, setting up a Facebook page calling for a fire watch at recruitment centers nationwide on July 30th. A fire watch. He writes, Citizens, I will be standing watch outside the Armed Forces Recruitment Center in Middletown, New York. I encourage anyone and everyone who is willing to defend this country, their own freedom, and their fellow citizens who lay their lives on the line every day, voluntarily join me at their own local recruiting station. He adds, please be sure not to bring a weapon unless you are licensed to carry in your area. We are not trying to incite civil disobedience, Hmm. but to demonstrate we are able to defend our servicemen and women lawfully by the rights given uh, given us by the Constitution. Uh, See, I didn't realize the dude had a bow and arrow with him. I had uh, put on the headline when I posted this on Facebook that he was weaponless. So apparently he was not weaponless. Yeah, it's difficult, I I would say nay, impossible to see in the photo that they Mm -hmm. have. Uh, he yeah, also advised people to bring lawn chairs and plenty of water that helmets and chain mail are <laughs> optional. And he actually is wearing chain mail in the photograph, which is kind oh, yeah. of... He, he's wearing armor, chain mail, like he's dressed in full regalia. I suggest if you go to keep him company, you need to go pertain to Gallup and bring some coconut shells with you while, <laughs> while you're going. Uh, Monty Python reference for those who <laughs> didn't know. I, I I think it would be hilarious if somebody dressed up as the Black Knight and stood by him and From was the, like, the let's Grail. duel. So there you go. Uh, Knights Templar. I got to say, Daryl, I don't know a whole lot about them. They, uh, you had, had told me that they were part of the Catholic Church and they slaughtered Muslims back in the day. Uh, back during the Crusades. And there's a lot of conspiracy theories that right. surround the Knights Templar. That's probably more of what I know about them. Yes, yeah. I'm here. Yeah. So, Which still is not much. Right. It's not a lot that I know about them either, mm-hmm. other than, you know, like it was sort of a secret elite group of knights that fought during the Crusades. Hmm. And the Crusades was basically the Catholic Church killing Muslims over Holy Land in Israel. Okay. Um, anything else you want to share about that one? I think that this is absolutely ludicrous. What uh, part? The, the whole thing. I, I would say the entire thing Meaning is ludicrous. the entire thing of going to military recruiting centers and standing guard, or just the entire thing of this guy in the Knights Templar outfit? Both. So, so the, the reason I think it is sort of ludicrous, and I don't really think that it is sending a message because the military is saying, we don't want you here. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're saying that it's actually interfering with recruiting, <laughs> which I right, think is a good so, thing. Okay, so interfering with recruiting, I would Isn't say, is kind a of a good thing. Right. That, yeah, right. that's definitely, you know, it's got the opposite effect of what they're shooting for. Like, you know, these well, people are... it depends. Are, it depends no, who the you Oath ask. Keepers are mostly rah, rah, yay, America. Uh, <laughs> we just don't want to, like, disarm Americans. So, therefore, we're going to go out with our guns and show America. Uh, and I, I realize that there are certainly some people that are part of Oath Keepers that have become conscientious objectors and they mm-hmm. oppose the military industrial complex. Well, because I think that Chris is one of those guys. I mean, at least that's certainly. the impression I get from him. He's a uh, two time co host of Free Talk Live. He was on two Sundays ago, and you had him on one of your fill in yes. shows. Mm-hmm. He is the guy who's heading up the Oath Keepers here in the Keene area that right. are doing this. And so he's been out there every single day for like eight hours a day 
standing out in front of the military uh, recruiting center here in Keene. And, and this is a guy, as why I say, it just depends on who you ask. I'm sure if you go down south or wherever and you right. talk to these guys, they're going to be a very different crew than Chris and, and his buddies. Right. And Chris actually told me privately uh, it, when he are was... You gonna, are you allowed to say this on the air if he told it to you privately? Well, like, it's not something he posted on Facebook is okay. what I'm saying. He, he said that he hopes that none of the people involved, and I, I think he meant anywhere, not just here in Keene, he said he hopes that none of the people involved use this as an opportunity to, quote, unquote, shoot them some Muslims. Because mm-hmm. you know that there are people that wind up, you know, like, that there are people that join the military because they want to go kill people. And there there's probably people. somebody that's going to sure. be like, I'm going on guard watch so I can shoot me a muzzy. There's a, there's a chance of that. No doubt. So that's why I think the thing is ridiculous because you know there's going to be somebody that is going to join in. That's not your fault, though. I mean, if if what your goal is is to go out, and I can't speak for Chris, but I can, you know, I've interviewed him and I've got the interview. We can play it back here in a moment. Um, it would be actually interesting if he happened to be listening tonight and could call and sort of de- debate you on this because I totally see where he's coming from. I and, see where and he's that is coming that from. This is an outreach project in some ways to not only communicate on one level, communicate the idea that gun-free zones are a bad idea and get people talking about that, which he says has happened, that this is, you know, that word has gotten out, that people are understanding that gun-free zones are a bad idea, that even here in Keene, New Hampshire, which is kind of a lefty town for New Hampshire, people still agree that the gun-free zones are a bad idea. He's been getting 98% positive reactions from folks. Um, And... And so I guess what I'm, my point is that it's that on one level, and then on another level, it's sort of an outreach to the people who react as well. So for the people that show up, for the people that uh, stop by to talk, for the people that are there to assist, it's an opportunity for somebody who, like Chris, is a principled, liberty-minded person to express those ideas in a way that hopefully the kind of kind of person who's coming from a military background could understand and appreciate that. Right, but— The vast majority of the people, and I'm purely speculating here based Mm -hmm. on my interaction with people that call themselves Oath Keepers, the vast majority that I have encountered, they're not principled libertarians. But everybody starts somewhere. kind of libertarian, and they just really, really, really like guns. Okay, well, there's a that's, there's a starting point for everybody, and if Chris Reedman's the first person who expresses ideas of liberty to you, and you know he's a gun guy too, then maybe they're going to listen to him, as opposed to the pot smoking hippies out on Central Square. <laughs> I think it's point. a great outreach project. Eight fifty five, four fifty free. I got the interview coming up. Are you searching for your soulmate, someone you can trust, who will never betray you, or cooperate with the NSA? Stop searching. With EasyDNS, you found a keeper. EasyDNS does it all. Domain names, web hosting, and managed WordPress hosting. EasyDNS stands up for your internet freedom. And with servers in Canada, they do not cooperate with the NSA. Go to EasyDNS.com. You'll love their services or get a full refund. They guarantee it. And they accept Bitcoin. That's EasyDNS.com. You know what rubs millions of people the wrong way? Their thighs. Shaq talks gold bond friction defense. Skin friction is quite an affliction. On your legs, arms, whether you're running a 5K or just running upstairs. And gold bond friction defense is... Soothing. Indeed. It's non-greasy, moisturizes, and helps like nobody's business. Because your thighs rubbing together is nobody's business. Gold bond friction defense. Defense starts now. Your thighs will thank you. Oh, boy. This is Mark of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the economic engine that powers our country. With a printing press tethered to Washington bureaucrats and New York central bankers, how can we trust paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, or go to gold.freetalklive.com. Again, 877-357-9938. 877-357-9938. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. 
Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number three is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at lrn.fm. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media Capital of the World, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Friday, July 24th, 2015. Silver is trading at $14.52 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,082 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $286. Antiwar.com reports the recent bombing attack in Sirak, Turkey appears to have been a wake-up call for the Turkish government after months of relative ambivalence about the Islamic State's growth on their southern border. Yesterday, a border clash erupted between the military and the Islamic State forces, leaving at least one soldier slain. One the Islamic State fighter was also killed in the attack that followed. This sudden realization that they have a long border with the Islamic State Caliphate and that this might be a problem has the Turkish military scrambled to secure that border, digging a 365-kilometer ditch along much of the border, setting up reconnaissance drones, and installing some 150 kilometers of modular walls there. The military is also deploying fighter jets and tanks to the border region, anticipating more cross-border attacks by the Islamic State forces, a problem which opposition figures say Turkey wasn't taking seriously until the most recent round of attacks. Turkey has long been the route of choice for the Islamic State recruits to enter the caliphate and with with Turkey openly endorsing the Syrian civil war, they've done little to prevent the recruits from crossing. This recent tension along the border may serve to slow the Islamic State's recruitment. For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and permanently removed the minimum purchase order for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing and a forward-thinking approach to new technologies. 850-478-5270 or online at rrbi.co. UPI reports British police were again reminded Thursday of Europe's immigration crisis when they discovered the body of a young man on top of a commuter train headed from France to Britain. The body was discovered after the train arrived in the town of Folkestone, though investigators believe he likely died shortly after climbing a top in France. Investigators were not immediately certain of the man's identity or exactly when or how he died. Thursday's discovery follows a rash of other incidents involving migrants traveling across Europe, including one earlier in the month in which three people were injured after officials say they broke into the train's tunnel and tried to stow away. In 2115 New England, there are no borders, no states, and no regulations, yet never has a more peaceful and prosperous place existed. But Mr. Drake's security company has seen better days. Faced with the prospect of waning power, Mr. Drake intends to replace the anarchy of New England with a government. But at what cost? Will anybody care? And can anyone stop him? Anarchy in New England by Joe Jarvis is available from Amazon.com and all major bookstores. Reuters reports the president of the U.S. military's medical college says he took swift action after he learned in 2013 that John Henry Hagman, a former army doctor teaching there, was injecting students with hypnotic drugs, inducing shock by withdrawing their blood, and performing rectal exams in class. Hagman was escorted off the Uniformed Services University campus in Maryland, and the college quickly offered students blood tests to determine if they had been exposed to any diseases. School president Charles Rice also said the college launched an internal investigation into Hagman's conduct and it forwarded information to law enforcement authorities and the Virginia Board of Medicine, which revoked Hagman's license last month. Rice said, we took immediate steps, but records reviewed by Reuters, including the university's own investigation, showed that school officials had known of Hagman's teaching methods for more than 20 years. The records also show that three faculty members sat in on Hagman's course in 2012, but did not alert their superiors despite witnessing practice practices that the school has since banned. One former dean even pushed to have Hagman court-martialed in 1993 over similar allegations. According to the school's internal review dated December 2013, the university's culpability cast a wide net. The document includes 27 pages of finding and 45 exhibits that total more than 350 pages. In sworn statements that are part of the report, unidentified colleagues offered varied descriptions of Hagman, an iconoclast and a cowboy, some 
someone who had an almost magical spell-like effect on people, and an officer on a righteous mission impatient with government rules. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. Procter & Gamble introduced a beginner series of its Bounty Paper Towel brand this week, specifically designed to assist novices in acclimating to the household cleaning product. The new entry-level paper towels will reportedly feature bold labels and guide markers clearly printed on the surface of each sheet, as well as a step-by-step -step instructional DVD in each package. Make sure that your paper towel is directly on top of the stain and not beside the stain. Otherwise, you won't absorb any liquid. Place your paper towel directly on the stain and make a gentle wiping motion. And in this week's local news, an area man knows that deep down, he's not done vomiting. In other news, Los Angeles residents are plagued by a roving pack of feral celebrities living in the Hollywood Hills. God wonders what happens to humans after they die. And a local dad clarifies that this is not a food stop. I was told early on that I would never be able to procreate, but I imagine the cold, dejected sensation I experience at the end of this news summary is similar to what a father feels when holding a child of his own flesh and blood. This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live. Of course, you can bring up anything that you want at 855-450-FREE. Also, Skype in at username lrn.fm. We've been talking about the uh, recruitment centers, military recruitment centers being guarded by Oath Keepers and various other people. Uh, so I was talking with Chris Reitman, who is one of the Oath Keepers in the area here in Keene. He's heading up the effort to guard the military recruitment center. They had long rifles that they were holding earlier this week and have now changed to concealed carry based on a memo, apparently, that was sent out to the military recruiting centers telling them that they needed to start calling the police against the people who were doing the guarding of the military recruiting centers. So apparently the fact that the folks are out there guarding the military recruiting centers has actually been making life more difficult for the recruiters uh, in that their, their bosses are kind of coming down on them over this. So even if the recruiting people, the people that work in the center, even if they like having the guards outside, mm -hmm. they've been getting heat from the higher ups in the military about this. The claim being that the guarding of the recruiting centers is actually scaring away potential recruits. So ultimately, hold on, hold on. My my brain just sort of like stops. There are a lot of aspects to there this. for a second. Yeah. <laughs> if you're being scared away from a military <laughs> recruiting center because someone has guns, then you have no business going yeah. to a military recruiting yeah, center. Let, let that sink in for a little bit. <laughs> now, that's a good point, Is Darryl. that basically what is being said, that people are being scared away from military recruiting centers because of guys with guns? I actually have the memo here. So this is the alleg allegedly leaked memo dated the 21st of July, the MCRC Frost Call. 027-15, dated 21 July 2015. MCRC, me me meaning Military Command Recruiting Center, I think. Okay. Uh, from Commanding General, Marine Corps Recruiting Command. Subject, guidance on armed citizens at recruiting offices following Chattanooga, Chattanooga incident. Reference, MCRC Order 3302.1A. Number one, purpose. To provide guidance regarding the presence of armed citizens in the vicinity of Marine Corps, oh, Marine Corps, MCRC. Uh, or MCRO, of Marine Corps recruiting offices and facilities. Two, background. In the aftermath of the Chattanooga incident, several recruiting stations as well as other services are reporting that armed citizens are standing outside recruiting stations in an attempt to safeguard local recruiters. Three, information. These citizens' presence, while well-intentioned, will be counterproductive to our recruiting operations. That says to me that it will be keeping people who could be potential recruits away from the recruiting center. What, how else could it be counterproductive? <laughs> if their job is to produce recruits and this is counterproductive, that would mean that people are not going 
to the recruiting center because of the guys with guns outside, right? I mean, there's right, no way so else you could t- you could take that. You, you, you should not be joining the military yeah. if you're scared of people <laughs> with guns because when you join the military, like, the third thing they do is give you a gun. And you're going to yeah. be around people with guns, for sure. So they should be thanking these guys for providing the first level of filtering that they need to actually get Absolutely. a decent quality of recruit. They ought to pay these guys to stand outside. Oh, that would make too much sense. Number four, action. The following guidance applies when armed citizens, which they will now be referring to as AC, are in the vicinity of Marine Corps offices. A, immediately notify local law enforcement of AC presence. Inform law enforcement that the Marine Corps did not request, nor do we support AC, armed citizens, being in the proximity of our facilities. B, At the lowest level possible, contact a responsible U.S. Army Corps of Engineers representative so they can notify the lessor of AC presence on their property. The lessor being the landlord. Right. No, I'm confused why the Army Corps of Engineers needs to get involved. They're the guys that build bridges and dams. I don't know. Maybe the maybe the manager of the building doesn't deal with the the landlords. Maybe it's the Army Corps of Engineers who handles all the the landlords is some sort of bureaucratic nonsense yeah. it sounds like part c do not engage with ac unless absolutely necessary if unavoidable inform ac which again means armed citizens that we appreciate their intent but their presence is unnecessary and disruptive to recruiting operations d do not allow ac to enter any recruiting facility e do not handle ac's weapons under any circumstances f Per the reference, submit a suspicious, threatening activity report, a STAR, via the appropriate chain of command to report presence of AC. All right, so on the don't handle their weapons under any circumstance thing, what if, by some weird coincidence, one of the people standing guard is actually friends with one of the people that works there, Mm -hmm. and they go shooting on the weekend? Does that mean that they can't, like, shoot the weapon? You mean on the weekend? Not because it just says, like, under any circumstance. And that would yeah, be any circumstance. So you're not allowed to associate with them outside of the work environment. That, that work you could environment. read it that way. Oh, yeah. my gosh. That's pretty much the end of the memo. They then give the uh, contact uh, information of the person writing it or whatever. So that's it. So, yeah, I mean, it's pretty clear that they consider this interference with their recruiting operations and that therefore that would mean that it would be scaring people off. That's my interpretation. I don't see how it could be interpreted any differently. Yeah, that I, I, I'm still <laughs> baffled by the whole thing of seeing people with guns is scaring people away from joining the military. So I went out there yesterday. Uh, it was my day off from the show, so I spent it making video. And I went and recorded uh, a eh, relatively short interview with Chris Reitman, who is heading up the outreach at the recruiting center here in Keene. They've gotten a lot of press so far, not just uh, nationwide, but here in Keene, the local newspapers reported on them on the front page twice. So Monday, they got a front page story. And then Wednesday, there was a follow up piece saying they're still there. And they got another story. And uh, local news media, television news actually came out apparently. So I wasn't the first person to come out and record them. Uh, but it, this is probably the most in-depth interview that is available out there of uh, of these folks, at least that I've seen from this area. Maybe there's a better one elsewhere. But this is uh, Chris Reitman with the Oath Keepers. You may recognize his voice. He's actually co-hosted Free Talk Live a couple times. Here it is. He slammed on his brakes right in the middle of the road. Locked him up, told us that from where he was at, he could kill every last one of us. All right, so that's my little teaser uh, that the video starts with, and then we'll actually start it chronologically from this. Good afternoon. It is Thursday afternoon here outside of the Military Recruiting Center in Keene, New Hampshire. We're with Chris Reitman, who has been out here pretty much the whole week. Uh, one of the folks with Oath Keepers. Chris, um, what briefly for people who might be seeing this for the first time, uh, what is an Oath Keeper? Oath Keepers are a nationwide organization made up of current and former Serbian military law enforcement whose goal is to educate uh, others that are in military and law enforcement that their oath that they took was to the Constitution, not to any political party or particular politician. So the Oath Keeper isn't necessarily a libertarian organization. In fact, 
it would be interesting to see a survey of Oath Keeper members and find out what their political beliefs are. What percentage of them would be defined, self-defined as a libertarian versus a you know a Republican or M- most of the ones Democrat. that I've spoken with would probably identify as constitutionalist. Mm-hmm. Uh, I would guess that they probably tend to vote Republican. Uh, I, you know, didn't really ask that, but most of them I met during various aspects of the Ron Paul presidential campaigns of 08 and 2012. I think that the Oath Keepers is a generally a good concept. I mean, I don't think it's going to necessarily result in a major paradigm shift for everybody that's in the military or the the police as far as respecting people's rights. Right. But if it can help bring some people on board with more of the idea of, hey, I did swear this oath and maybe it should mean something, then I don't think that's a bad idea. I think that generally I support the concept of, of Oath Keepers. If you are an Oath Keeper and you want to comment, you're welcome to join us here. Or if you're a critic of these guys, uh, please join us here on the uh, on the radio waves at 855-450-FREE. Daryl, you are a critic of this particular activism the guarding of the military recruiting centers, and you're not alone. I'm a skeptic. Skeptic, all right. Well, there's There are also critics within the liberty movement. In fact, uh, Chris has been getting a lot of heat for this from some sources. More coming up here in moments. You can share your thoughts on Free Talk Live. Attention business owners. Do you know the three most critical letters in business? CEO? MBA? Nope. Here's a hint. These three little letters can make the difference between making a fortune and losing everything. ROI? The answer is I-N-C, as in incorporation. Because if you're not incorporated and someone sues your business, you can lose it all. Your home, your car, even your life savings. That's why Incorporate.com is now giving away a free incorporation guide to all business owners. So you can incorporate in just 10 minutes. Protect your home. Protect your car. Protect your life savings. Call 1-800-941-1029 for your free 10-minute incorporation guide from Incorporate.com. They don't provide legal or financial advice. They just make incorporating or forming an LLC quick and easy. Get the three little letters that can mean the difference between making a fortune and losing everything. For your free guide, call 1-800-941-1029. That's 1-800-941-1029. In the U.S. alone, a home invasion occurs every 13 seconds. On top of that, the average response time for 911 is over 15 minutes. That just won't cut it. Don't allow yourself or the important people in your life to be victims. When seconds matter, don't be caught stumbling for your firearm. Get the protection you deserve. Get yourself a hidden holster from hiddenholster.com. It's the original hidden holster. The Hidden Holster is quick, easy, and convenient. It's versatile enough for the home, workplace, or virtually anywhere else you might need it. Have peace of mind with your firearm close by at all times. Go to HiddenHolster.com. That's HiddenHolster.com. If you own a firearm, you need a Hidden Holster. Your protection matters, and self-defense is the best defense. Go to HiddenHolster.com. That's HiddenHolster.com. The original Hidden Holster. So the protection of life, liberty, and property is, is what the Free State Project is all about. But it's an, it's an effort to move 20,000 people who understand. It's about demonstrating to the entire country. That, yeah, we can have a free market, a truly free market. Making it just a freer, great place to live. It's the world's largest voluntarist libertarian community, and it's, it's only getting bigger. That's amazing. To be able to move to a place where other people like passionately believe in being free and independent. What the Free State Project is managing to do though is to put their money where their mouth is physically getting up across the country and saying let's go someplace and let's demonstrate the power of these ideas there's a lot of kind of philosophy that surrounds liberty there's a lot of thinking about it and talking about it but here in new hampshire people are doing it 101 reasons liberty lives in new hampshire a documentary by free state project early movers watch it free at 101reasonsfilm.com 101reasonsfilm.com 
If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. Radio is the most personal of mediums. I exist right now in your head. If you listen to Free Talk Live regularly, you know me. Free Talk Live is on more than 160 radio stations around the U.S. and has been downloaded on every continent around the world. Hundreds of thousands of listeners with ad packages from $600 a month to $6,000 a month. Imagine what we can do for your business, project, website, or idea. Email me, mark at freetalklive.com. Do you love Twitter? Make sure you favorite the LRN.FM Twitter account so you can receive our tweets at twitter.lrn.fm. That's twitter.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live. Hey, you can join the show here and bring up anything you want at 855-450 free. With you in the studio tonight, it's Ian. Danica. And Daryl. We're discussing the recruiting operations that are going on right now. There's uh, military recruiting centers that are being guarded by members of Oath Keepers and other people who want to assist with that. There are a variety of groups that have been involved, but it seems to really be being pushed and led by the Oath Keepers organization, which is an organization that's not necessarily libertarian, but definitely... Uh, I think jibes well with people who are coming from the liberty-oriented perspective, especially those who've had time that they've served in the military or as uh, police officers and then have come to the ideas of liberty later on. They see some real value in this organization, and they've been around for, I think, at least a decade now, it seems like, that we've been talking about. It's been a while. Here on Free Talk Live. And so we can keep discussing that, or you can bring up anything you want. Uh, Skype username, again, is lrn.fm, and you can call in toll-free at 855-450-FREE. Maybe you're in the Oath Keepers, or maybe you're critical of this particular activism, or skeptical, as Daryl is uh, also. I also, you know, you might be skeptical of the claims about purse, because it does sound too good to be true. 20% off, 25% off, maybe even 29%. That's what I got on my headphones I'm wearing right now. 25% off, 20% off easily. Amazon.com. Anything you want to buy does sound too good to be true, but it's the real deal. Now, uh, you go to purse.freetalklive.com, get signed up for an account there, and you can get started. You can learn how to use Purse. There's a slight learning curve. You do have to spend a little bit more time to get that level of discount. So and what I mean by that is you have to go to Amazon, you add something to a wish list, then you go and you import your wish list into Purse, and then Purse allows you to select the discount that you want. The higher the discount you want, the longer it might take to fulfill the order. Uh, the average discount in the United States is 20% off on purse. Wow. So that being the average, you can get more than the average or you can get less than the average. People that want instant gratification, they can use purse instant, save an instant 5% right there. Mm-hmm. And they don't have to wait. But if you don't mind waiting for a little bit, you can get big money off your How products How long is a typical wait, I guess? I don't know what the typical wait is, but I can tell you that uh, when yeah, I, when I put these wait? headphones on, it took me about a day or less to actually get that fulfilled. Oh, I did okay. something for 20% off once and it took an hour and a half. So, I mean, it's it's usually not very long at all. Now, do you have, pro- have Amazon Prime so you get the shipping or does it not affect your Prime membership? The shipping depends on the person who's buying it for you. Yes. So if the oh, person, it's done by a buyer. Okay. So what happens is you're putting the item that you want on a marketplace, and it's open to a bunch of people who could buy it, and then they buy it as a gift for you, and then you essentially pay out Bitcoin to them. So that's how it works. So if the person with the buyer account has Prime, they're going to probably ship it to you Prime because they want to get the Bitcoin quickly. I've even had people ship me things overnight. Oh, wow. On this. Because they're so hungry for that Bitcoin, they want to get it as fast as possible, so they will overnight the item. So you don't know until the person buys it, and that is one factor here, right? You have to be willing to be patient gotcha. in order to get 20 or 25% off. 
is. So if you are, then, man, you can get some awesome deals. Go to purse.freetalklive.com to get started there. Again, that's purse.freetalklive.com. We're playing the audio from a video interview of Chris Reitman. It's him on the side of the street. He's actually a two-time Free Talk Live co-host now as a guest co-host here in the studio. He's a, uh, I think he's in his very early 50s, maybe like 50 or 51. Yeah, I think 51. And he has been standing outside of the local military recruiting center all week long. I don't know if he was there today, but I presume he was. In fact, I'm, I'm certain he was because he came by to get a two-way radio, actually. So he must have been out there for some time today. Yesterday, I went out there and recorded this video, asked him first, what is Oath Keepers? He explained that, and we pick up the video there. It's a group of former military that believe in honoring their oath to not violate the Constitution and, you know, confiscate people's guns. And I would say they should go further than that and also not arrest people for smoking cannabis or possessing drugs because, you know, you're supposed to have the right to pursue happiness by the Declaration of Independence and such. So they should honor, honor that one, too. But anyway, that I don't run the organization. It's a good, I think, first step for people to maybe uh, who are coming from a military perspective to become more acclimated to being, uh, I guess, more independent from the orders that they're receiving from hot on command. Let's go on, though, here with the interview. They have to respect the oath that is to a constitution. So what does that mean, to respect the oath? Well, you can use some examples. So if uh, an officer was instructed to go uh, take all of Ian's guns away from him for no reason, that would be a violation of the Second Amendment. That police officer or military should refuse that order. Given that he swore an oath to uphold to the, the constitution. Con uphold the constitution. So, um, when did you start out here, outside of this uh, military recruiting center? We were here about 8.45 on Monday morning, um, so we've been going for, I guess this is the fourth day we've been out here. What was your motivation? Why did you come out here? Well, I really wanted to point out the uh, hypocrisy. By the way, you're hearing people driving by behind us, and it's, so you'll hear some honks and some People saying some things, which were generally very, very positive, at least while I was standing there. See, and the insanity of gun-free zones. That's that's the message. So the military doesn't allow their own people in this building, or anyone in this building, to carry a firearm? That's correct. And Could it's you actually, walk in there? With the exception of military police on bases, no member of the military is allowed to be armed on U.S. soil while on duty. And that's why that guy who was at Fort Hood was able to get away with shooting so many, correct? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, That's he actually mentions that here in a moment, that they're not also not allowed on bases, which I think I think that's shocking for a lot of people. That is shocking. I did not know about that. Right. When you think about the military, you always think somebody's got a gun, right? Because that's the military, but no, apparently not when they're on base. Now, does that count in uh, international bases or just domestic? Uh, the information that I received was only about domestic. Right. I'm guessing if you're in an international base, depending on if you're in what's considered a conflict area or not, the rule would vary. But I don't know what the rule is on foreign bases. Carry firearm? That's correct. Could you walk in there with a gun? No. Wow. Can you be on the property uh, or do you have to be out here on the sidewalk? No, we've agreed to be on the sidewalk. Mm -hmm. uh, during the whole week, we've been all around the property. We haven't had a real problem with that. The recruiters have complained a little bit that we're, they're getting a lot of complaints, a lot of phone calls about, particularly from bank customers. There's a bank right next door to mm -hmm. us, uh, seeing our armed guys running around the now back of the building and stuff like today that. Today, you're not open carrying anything. Um, you had what looked like rifles of some sort. What, what was being... Before we go on here, the uh, it's interesting that People are complaining about it, right? Because they're in New Hampshire. Okay, just to just reset the scene for anybody just tuning in. This is Keene, New Hampshire. And in New Hampshire, it's completely legal to walk around with a gun. You can carry, a, you could strap a, a rifle to your back and walk around with that. In fact, I heard while I was actually having a conversation with Chris, now this was off camera later, uh, but Steve, who's one of the local activists, and Chris, we were talking about concealed carrying. And apparently it's actually legal in New Hampshire to conceal carry a long rifle if you can conceal it. So if so, it's illegal without a government permit to conceal carry a pistol. But you can apparently have a you know shotgun or a rifle or a machine gun or something and legally conceal that so long as it is actually concealed. That's my understanding. I don't know what the actual law says, but that's what I was told. So 
presume it's accurate. 855 450 free. So it's it's an interesting place being here in New Hampshire. More on the way. It's Free Talk Live. Did you know some countries are now banning GMO foods? It's true. That's why for quality storable foods, you need ready-made resources. For over 19 years, we've become the name you can trust for thousands of products, like Numana Healthy Food Storage. All Numana storable foods are non-GMO, non-soy and gluten-free available. Call 800-627-3809 or click readymaderesources.com. Ready-made resources. We don't just sell the products, we live it. Hey, Berkey Guy here. Are you still drinking unfiltered tap water? Does your water contain chlorine or fluoride? Will you have drinkable water in an emergency? The Berkey Guy is here to help you remove these and other potential contaminants from your water, thus helping you drink clean, purified water. We offer Berkey water purification systems at the lowest available prices online. Don't go another moment without Berkey System. Over the last 10 years, we've helped thousands drink clean, purified water. Join them by visiting GoBerkey.com or call me, the Berkey Guy, at 877-886-3653. That's 877-886-3653. You can't win if you don't enter, and you actually can improve your chances of winning a prize drawing if you wrinkle up your entry blank. I'm Holland Cook from survivalspeech.com, and I speak from experience. Why this works? If they'll be spinning the drum before drawing, your entry blank will move around more than, and not adhere to, other perfectly flat entry blanks. And if they don't spin the drum and merely reach into a box full of other perfectly flat entry blanks, many of which are sticking together, yours will feel different to the person reaching in. When you win, act surprised. And if you're looking for work, this is a metaphor. For more tips on sticking out in a world where just too much blends into the blah, 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 hit survivalspeech.com. I'm Holland Cook. When I found the Free State Project, I knew it was the key to achieving liberty in my lifetime. It's awesome to be surrounded by like-minded, freedom-loving activists who've moved here to New Hampshire. From politics to civil disobedience, we have it all. Where I came from, it felt that no matter what I did, liberty was dying. Perhaps you feel the same way? Call 888-377-2515 now to learn more about the Free State Project. That's 888-377-2515 or visit freestateproject.org. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's posts pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click get notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. Free Talk Talk live. We're talking about piracy. The Barbary pirates were attacking um, American merchant ships and taking the sailors into slavery. Yep. Um, uh, which is a little worse than conscribing them like England was. England was just making them, you know, do a little bit of work. I mean, it's certainly the slavery, but to a much lesser extent. <laughs> um, when, Did they get the doubloons? That's what I want. When, the, Avast. <laughs> when somebody from the Sudan takes you into slavery, uh-huh. you're in slavery. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's slavery in its uh, raw sense. Mm-hmm. So he sent over the Navy in order, um, was it? Well, that's the risk you take I on the high seas. Trying to think of uh, this this famous uh, American pirate, but I can't remember his name offhand. Blackbeard. Now, now. Redbeard. <laughs> no. Goldbeard. <laughs> <laughs> Maroon beard. <Yeah. laughs> Free Talk Live, seven nights a week from seven to ten Eastern, live on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. Listen to LRN.FM on any phone, anytime. 213-493-0309. That's 213-493-0309. Free Talk Live. You can dial in toll free to join us here. Our number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. We've also got Skype at Skype username LRN.FM. Comments are welcome on the Oath Keepers and keeping guard at military recruiting centers around the country. It's happening here in Keene, and the guy heading it up happens to be a Free Talk Live co-host. 
uh, a guest co-host, Chris. He's been on the show a couple of times. Chris Not Cantwell, Chris Reitman uh, is his real name. He wasn't using his real name on the air, but it's it's going to be impossible to you know to keep that a secret given the visibility that he's garnered for himself in the last Especially week. considering that, what was it, last week we read the story about what he was doing up in Alstead as, as a, selectman. a selectman, and we gave his full name, and he called in and was like, yeah, yeah I'm that guy. Right. <laughs> so he's out of the closet <laughs> now uh, at this point as far as Does his being, girlfriend know? As far as being an activist is concerned. He still has his girlfriend. She's very nice. Uh, so No, I meant did she know he was out of the closet? As an activist, I guess she probably does at, uh, <laughs> at this point. So he's there. He's on the streets. He's got his Oath Keepers t-shirt. He's got his Oath Keepers hat. Uh, but he doesn't have an open carried gun right now. And they did earlier this week. So why the change? Well, I'll ask him about that in the uh, remainder of this interview. If you want to join us online, go to freetalklive.com. You can get interactive. You can submit show content right there to the front page of the site. Other listeners can vote whether they like or dislike what you've submitted, and you get to vote on things as well. So go and get interactive for free over at freetalklive.com. We continue now more with Chris from out front of the Military Recruiting Center here in Keene, New Hampshire. This was recorded yesterday, and he was back out there again today. I mean, they're pulling long shifts out there in the in the hot summer sun on some days. It was actually a fairly nice day today, but earlier this week it was pretty brutal out there. So they're pretty dedicated to this. And let's continue. And then we'll get your thoughts. Uh, you're certainly welcome to join us here. Maybe you're critical of this activism. It's certainly not uncommon for libertarians to be critical of this. There have been a lot of critique online towards Chris and the other folks who are doing this. So we'll continue with the discussion. Open carrying anything. Um, you had what looked like rifles of some sort. What, what was being carried out here earlier this week? Earlier, most people had semi-automatic rifles and most people had sidearms. So um, that's kind of where we were at before. Um, because of legislation that's got fast track now, it's a Semper Fi Act, um, which is designed to repeal those Department of Defense rules and other restrictions that keep these guys from being able to, to carry inside the building. With that, um, in a sense, we've really accomplished our, our goal in that when we started this, there was no legislation on the table after 21 odd shootings on U.S. soil. They had never proposed this before. And apparently now, since We've had activists across the country get out there and, and stand guard. Somebody's finally agreed to put some legislation forward. How many, um, I mean, I obviously you don't want to necessarily give away too many details about your operational security, but uh, sure. uh, what, how, many, how many people have been out here assisting with your, uh, your duties? Grand total, there's probably been 15 people that have rotated in and out. Is everyone who's been here an Oath Keeper? No, absolutely not. There's other groups, uh, other Patriot groups. There's. Mm -hmm individual citizens. There are a lot of veterans that have no affiliation really with anybody other than uh, they felt that they wanted to take part in what we're doing. You know, it's interesting. After uh, this on-camera interview, he told me a little bit later on that it's been more difficult to get volunteers out there now that they're going to a concealed carry. Because a lot of people just want to carry their weapons out in the right. uh, in the open, so it's yeah, not it's as, not as fun for them to have to keep it hidden. Right, <laughs> it's not as much fun. So, so they took a little bit of the fun away from it, and now it's it's getting a little more challenging to wrangle the volunteers uh, to come out. And you know, as he was saying, he did it because the recruiters were getting some heat, and you know, they did, they weren't necessarily doing this to make the recruiters' lives difficult. It was more of a, a statement about gun-free zones. They wanted to to start a conversation in the media and um, amongst people about gun-free zones. And that he feels like he's definitely accomplished. There's been a lot of people who've come by. There's been a lot of media and he's made, you know, he's hammered the, that point that, you know, even though he might not agree with the military and what they're doing, these are still human beings and they still should be able to have the right to defend themselves. Right. So let me continue with, uh, with Chris Reitman from the Oath Keepers. So you've changed your operational security. I um, mean, it's pretty obvious to anybody driving by, there's no more long rifles out here. It's not, you're not open carrying. Um, why, what happened? Well, I think what we've seen is number one, uh, we've been working very closely with uh, law enforcement and with the recruiters, trying to impact other people's lives as a little, of, little as possible. And also the surrounding businesses, um, the bank next door, I mean, they've, Certainly, they've had customers that have been a little nervous about what's been going on. Mm -hmm. um, and the fact that now legislation is getting fast-tracked, I mean, if that was our goal, 
then we've kind of achieved it and we can maybe take a little bit lower. Um, was that the actual goal to get legislation or was it to raise awareness? I think um, raise awareness and our, our goal I think when we started was until they are able to carry on their own. Because I didn't know, you know, yeah. I had no idea that a military person at a recruiting center couldn't carry a right. Or a gun. any military base. Yeah. There, there are no guns. It's one of the largest gun-free zones you can imagine. Tell me about the reaction. I mean, you're out here, we're on one of the busiest streets in Keene. Uh, this is West Street. And I mean, you get people driving by all day. What's, what's it been like? 98% positive. Mm -hmm. If anybody lets their opinion be known, 98% has been positive. 2% maybe. I mean, it's- Give me an example of the 2%. Uh, we had a guy yesterday who slammed on his brakes right in the middle of the road locked him up, told us that from where he was at, he could kill every last one of us, <laughs> and uh, asked us, uh, accused us of all being from out of town, nobody's even a local, you, none of you pay taxes. <laughs> it was crazy. And then we had a bunch of people- You live in Alstead. I live in Alstead, right which is a couple towns up. Yeah. Um, but then we had a bunch of people yelling at him from Dunkin' Donuts and D'Angelo <laughs> and the business across the street. It was pretty interesting. And uh, So it's guaranteed, no matter what happens, as we've said before on Free Talk Live, if you go out, you put yourself out there in a public way and do activism, whatever it is, you know, whether it's going against the war, whether it's going for the recruiters, protection, being able to protect themselves, uh, whatever your, you know, your, the movement, somebody's going to drive by and yell, get a job! Yes. Or do something else that's offensive or flip you the bird. I mean, it's, it's almost a guarantee. So... Just to anybody out there that feels like, oh, you free staters, you're always, people hate you. Well, people just hate activism. They just don't like having their day disrupted by somebody being on the side of the road standing for something. They hate it. Well, and that could be somebody that's standing on the side of the road because they're getting paid to hold a sign that says this business is going out of jail. I'm sure somebody has yelled to that person. To get a job? Or to they're get even a job having a because promotion. they're just not paying attention to what the sign says. They just see somebody standing there holding a sign. What was that, Danica? Or they could just be holding up a sign, not necessarily for a closing business, for, but for a promotion. Sure. Like, that come test out our mattresses or I'd be shocked free if somebody hot would, dogs. Really? You think, I mean, I guess. People aren't that smart who drive by and yell those things, but you'd think they would know that the person who's promoting something or promoting a liquidation sale has is a like, job. Is likely getting compensated for it. I'm yes. saying they probably aren't paying attention to what the sign says. They uh, just see somebody holding a sign. Could be. That means protest. Therefore, no job. Therefore, get a job, you bum. Cash for gold. See that one a lot in Florida. <laughs> How's the relationship been with the uh, the folks inside here? I mean, there's a, biz a couple businesses, I guess, and there are a couple center. businesses uh, that are upstairs behind the gun-free zone sign, mm -hmm. and then we also have cleaning people that, that work in there too. The cleaning people have been extremely supportive of what we're doing. They've been happy. I don't know if I've met anyone who works upstairs uh, in the offices there. We we probably have. Um, our relationship with the recruiters has been good. Um, you know, we're civil, we're behaving peacefully. It's, it's nothing's gone wrong. Excellent. Um, so anything else you feel like I should have asked about that I didn't? No, I, I think the biggest thing I would say is that in, in a very liberal town, uh, when you have 98% of people that uh, voice positively to you, when they voice any opinion at all, taking Facebook and online out of the equation completely, I think it's pretty amazing. Uh, and I, I think that it's not just conservatives and things like that. I think people are finally understanding that we sort of changed the conversation from being about supporting the troops to being about why do we have gun-free zones. We'll continue. There's one more question for Chris Reitman with Oath Keepers. Here in moments, you can share your thoughts at 855-450 free on Free Talk Live. Every once in a while, you get information that's worth changing your life for. This is one such time. You can save up to and beyond 25% on all purchases at Amazon. You probably heard of Bitcoin and just not thought much about it. You certainly know that you can get competitive pricing at Amazon, but now you can get a 25% discount on nearly everything you need to live. I've just given you a huge raise, and all you have to do is claim it. You go to purse.freetalklive.com and open an account. Do this right now, don't wait. Then you fund the account with Bitcoin. You can buy them through expresscoin.com with a check or money order. There are other ways to get Bitcoin, but that's fast, safe, and easy. 
This information is worth you changing the way you do things. Go to purse.freetalklive.com right now and get signed up and cash in on the huge raise I'm offering you. 25% off of everything on Amazon through purse.freetalklive.com. It's purse.freetalklive.com. We, we, we are a survival company. We manufacture our own line of Level 3 and Level 3A body armor. We proudly make our armor 100% in America. We have the best prices in the nation, about $125 cheaper than our nearest competitor. All lab certified, for thou art my rock in my fortress, Psalm 31.3. We are Fortress Survival, LLC, dot, dot, dot com. We use mobile devices right against our bodies every day, but growing scientific evidence has emerged showing serious health risks associated with exposure to EMF radiation emitted from these devices. The solution is Defender Shield, the most effective mobile radiation shielding ever developed. Defender Shield blocks virtually 100% of EMF radiation from cell phones, tablets, and laptops and starts at just $64.99. Buy now at DefenderShield.com. For 10% off, use promo code GCN. DefenderShield.com, the worldwide leader in mobile radiation shielding. I've been told no in many different ways. I give you an order and you're going to obey it. Who told you you're going to explain? You can do that and you have to leave here. You cannot bring Simon to the rally. Walk with me. Well, I'm, I'm, no, I'm comfortable me. here, actually. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hey, whoa. hey, hey, hey. 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 Who do you think you Excuse are? me. There is no video or audio allowed in this office. No, I have work today. This is you ain't going to make. Wait a minute. Now. Wait a minute. Hey! Oh my god! Unbelievable! Because you're scared of property. What am I being detained for? You're being served. What is this? You're being served. What is this? Bureaucrats have a funny way of telling people no. That's the sound of the men working on the chain. Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree. Watch it for free and order the Director's Cut DVD at VictimlessCrimespree.com. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. This Your Family Today tip is brought to you by Nestle Pure Life Water, helping you drink better and live better by providing a zero-calorie alternative to sugary drinks. Visit us at nestle-purelife.us. When kids are playing, they often don't want to stop to keep hydrated, so send them out with a bottle of water and encourage them to take frequent drink breaks or call them inside for a quick sip. For more tips like these, visit us at parenthood.com slash yourfamilytoday. You can interact with other LRN listeners in our message board at forum.lrn.fm. That's forum.lrn.fm. Back now with more Free Talk Live. You can join us in the remaining moments, which are happening right now. we got time for you. 855-450-FREE. Maybe you want to comment on the Oath Keepers and specifically the current operation they're involved in which is protecting military recruiting centers where it's a gun-free zone. Anybody that's inside that military recruiting center, including the, including the military members themselves, are not allowed to carry weapons, which means it's like shooting ducks in a barrel uh, or fish in a barrel, I guess. You don't normally put Which is actually a little more difficult than what most people think, according to Mythbuster. <laughs> <laughs> but if there were monkeys in a barrel, it would be a lot easier uh, to shoot the monkeys. In theory, depends on if you're shooting from like a hole in the side or if you're shooting down through the top. If there are enough monkeys in the barrel, you're going to be able to shoot the monkeys. I mean, it's going to be a pretty big barrel. Yeah. (laughs) So um, anyway, my point being that uh, we've we've been discussing this issue. You can comment if you want or bring up anything here at 855-450-FREE or Skype in at username lrn.fm. We've been playing the video clip that I posted to the front page of freekeen.com yesterday where uh, it's an interview of Chris Reitman. He's an Oath Keeper here in New Hampshire. Liberty-oriented guy. This guy gets freedom. And so he's been getting a lot of heat for leading one of these 
protect the military things. Like, wait a minute, the military is this evil organization that goes around the world destroying lives. Why on earth would you want to provide protection to their operations? And I think that is a legitimate question to ask. Ultimately, this is an outreach project. This is my interpretation of what Chris has said. He's not here speaking for himself. We do have video of him, but he's not able to answer our active questions at the moment. But it seems like an outreach project to get people to think about gun-free zones and why gun-free zones are a bad idea. And his uh, outreach project in this case has been successful. He's gotten news media. He's had people stop by. People have been talking about this. And and he's changed the conversation from support the military, sort of this mindless chatter, to, hey, this is like an intellectual idea. Gun-free zones, no matter where they are, are a really bad uh, concept. And they put people in danger. Anybody who's inside a gun-free zone is essentially subject to being shot by someone who's willing to uh, you know, break that rule. So let me go on with a final question here for Chris Reitman outside of the Military Recruiting Center here in Keene, New Hampshire. Uh, over at freekeen.com. Mm. And that's that was a real good benefit of all this. Awesome. Very cool. Thanks for taking the time to talk. And uh, what's the, I guess, so I guess another question about uh, carrying. You are carrying right now. Absolutely. But just concealed carrying. Concealed carrying. So you have at least one gun on you. <laughs> at least one that you know of. <laughs> all right. Very good. Thank you, Chris. No problem. Yep. So there he is, Chris Reitman. At least one that you know of. Good answer. So, uh, Danica, I mean, what do you think? I mean, we know that Daryl is skeptical on this particular form of activism, but having now heard Chris's side of things and uh, my explanation, what what do you think about this? You know, I agree on some extent that why would you be protecting an institution that advocates going to war and hurting innocent people? But at the same time, I so appreciate him exercising his Second Amendment rights and protesting that this these gun free zones are like you said a very bad idea and people should be free to be able to carry whatever kind of weapon they want to defend themselves i i think it's a great outreach and like i said i think it's a great way to introduce people to the idea of liberty because we have we, to do that we have to do that i mean how, i mean how many people came to the idea of liberty through say ron paul i mean yeah, it's, a lot know, of it's people. It, lots of people it's just, it's it's a gateway to get people into the ideas of liberty. So right, Chris is like Chris. a gateway. I love that the gateway. Chris is like the gateway drug <laughs> for people who are not quite there on the ideas of freedom. I yet, need two might... doses of Chris, please. Yeah. <laughs> no, well, one thing that I will say, and it's very telling, and I didn't you know mention this at the time that Chris said it, but when they started going concealed only, he said they started having a hard time finding enough people. And that's mm -hmm. because a lot of the people that were there, they weren't there because of liberty. They were there because they wanted to show off, look what big guns I've got. Well, it wasn't a requirement. I, I, I want to play with my guns. But wait, it wasn't a requirement to have uh, people be liberty-oriented to help him with this. That is, that is another Correct. way that he can reach people, right? Anyone so if, that was willing to right. participate. If somebody comes out and they're willing to help him, then that means they're going to be hanging out with Chris. And that right. means that conversations will happen, and maybe he can talk to these people about certain issues. He said he was talking to one of these guys about heroin legalization. And so, you know, who knows where these conversations are going to go. But if if somebody is out there talking with Chris Reitman, they're talking with a liberty-oriented guy. And right, that's, and I'm that's not, never I'm not saying that they're not. Right. That, that's why I'm skeptical about this because, you know, like there's certainly benefits to Chris having done this, but at the same time, you have to realize that the vast majority of people that were doing this mm -hmm. were not trying to promote liberty. I they don't were know. trying to promote America. I don't know about what the majority was trying to do, but I guess what you're saying is if Chris wasn't there and one of the others was on shift at the time without Chris around, then they weren't necessarily doing a Liberty Outreach Project at right. that moment. And that much is true. I'll grant As you that. As a whole, it was not Liberty Outreach. Okay, maybe as a whole it was not, right? But a good portion of it could have been. And While was. Chris was there. And Chris was there like eight hours a day. But Chris so. was not at the other however many hundreds of places not across the country. Yeah, well, that's not our issue, right? Like, we can't control what I'm other sure people do. I'm sure they had their own different motives that they wanted to be out there, whether it was for liberty, whether it was for just being able to exercise your Second Amendment rights. 
have we talked? I mean, have there been other news articles about the reasons that these other people? But I'm sure there's hundreds. Well, of Well, Chris gets interviewed because he's the one heading it up. Sure. So the media goes to him to get comments. So that's a good thing, right? Because yes. then he can sculpt the message. So it's about gun-free zones and not necessarily about protecting the military. Right. So he can do and, that. And just an FYI. I was also extremely skeptical about the Tax Enough Already protests that, yeah, there certainly were some pro-liberty conversations that happened at those things six mm-hmm. years ago, but most of them were about America and Obama's uh, Kenyan. Are those the Tea Party you're talking about? Yeah, okay. it started off Tax oh, Enough that Already. For? That's what T stands for? Yes, that's what T stands that. for. Oh. And then the... I just thought it was like, it's a tea party because of the Boston no, Tea Party. No, it started taxed enough already. Ah. And then it just got shortened and they removed the period. Well, and, th- and I'm glad you and brought that up. And then the Occupy stuff. I was skeptical about that because... Are you yeah, still skeptical? Yes. Because there's only like one Occupy that still happens and it's for an hour a day. There's not much tea parties going on either. Right. Look, I um I see where you're coming from. But there's no perfect activism, right? There are certain people out there who are like, you guys in Keene, you need to plan your activism better. And as far as I'm concerned, I'd rather have people going out and doing things and making mistakes while they're doing them and then learning from those mistakes, hopefully over time, and doing them better in the future than sitting back and planning something to death. Uh, and I think there's something to be said for what Chris is, is doing. And it's fi- it's fine to be skeptical. Obviously, we need s- people who are skeptical to ask tough questions. And, you know, maybe that helps shape these things for the future. Uh, but I went to both the Tea Party and Occupy here in Keene. And the reason I did that was not because I agreed with everything everybody said at the Tea Party or Occupy. is because they were doing something. They are a group of people who are upset about the status quo. And if we can bring libertarians into groups of people who are upset about the status quo, libertarians can explain their viewpoint on why things are the way they are and maybe persuade people to come closer to liberty. And I have to say that I feel like my time in Occupy was well spent. And over at the Tea Party, I spent less time with the Tea Party because there weren't as many of them happening uh, out in this area. But I spoke at all of the Tea Party events as well. There was like an open mic. So hey, I'm going to get up and say something about not paying any taxes, right? So I'm going <laughs> to sculpt my message for the Tea Party differently than I'm going to sculpt my message for the Occupier. Sure. And uh, it was good. I made good connections, especially at Occupy, with people that I wouldn't have otherwise made. How long did the Occupy movement last here? Do you remember? <laughs> It's it like two still days? kind of is going on well, an the hour anti- a day. Well, there's the anti-war protest, but that's not what you're talking about. No, there's that's certain- on Saturday. Okay. The occupiers are still there at noon on uh, on D- daily in Keene. I think so. Wow. Where? I uh, guess in Central Square. Central I Square. They were doing it in Central Square. I guess I just haven't been down at noon, or I haven't thought to look at noon because I haven't noticed. I thought it was one. Well, whatever. Whatever. But- as far as I know, they're still out there for like an hour. Well, that's great. I didn't realize that. And it's become sort of like an all-encompassing general protest to where they've yeah. got like, you know, Doom Doma signs and NRA go away and <laughs> something. and some, So it's like all things liberal, I guess. I don't know if you can even call that Occupy anymore because, I mean, the, the whole Occupy thing, it had like... There, there were general assembly meetings where there was this decision-making process of you would hold up your hands, both hands, if you agreed, or you'd put them down if you disagreed. There was like different sign language things that they did, and it was, it was you know, it was an interesting process, and it was a way to connect with people that otherwise I wouldn't have been able to connect with, and I thought it was it was worthwhile. That didn't mean I was in agreeance with everything that everybody at Occupy did or said. And it also meant that New Hampshire's Occupy had a distinctly libertarian flavor to it as compared to the rest of the Occupies around the country. In fact, there was at one time a schism in New Hampshire Occupy between like the hardcore commies and the Who libertarians. Who incorporated? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah, they broke away and started a corporation, which was totally ironic. We're uh, out of time. We'll see you tomorrow night at freetalklive.com. I'm Steve Sidkowski, a former Wall Street insider. I'm holding a book that will show you investing strategies which could help you earn the kind of money you've always dreamed about. And right now I'm giving this book away for free. So who needs to read it? If you're in the middle of your career and worry you'll never have enough money to retire, you need to read this book. If you're already retired and your income isn't enough, you need to read this book. And if you don't want to be selling burgers at 80, you need to read this free book. It includes the strategy I use to make a 72% profit on a trade where the stock only moved 12%. 
you'll need at least a million dollars to ever fully retire. If you're behind on that goal, you really need to read Trade Like the Pros. And you can for free by calling 1-800-944-5836. Skeptical that it will deliver results? It's a free book, so what do you have to lose? Find out how at 1-800-944-5836. 1-800-944-5836. Are you a political activist who does things that the government might not like? Then this free ebook may save your life. RATS is your guide to protecting yourself against snitches, informers, informants, agents provocateur, narcs, finks, and similar vermin. RATS was written by OG libertarian Claire Wolf. RATS is a short book, easy to read, and available free in many formats. Download RATS free at rats-nosnitch.com. That's rats-nosnitch.com. LRN.FM is proud to announce our official listening apps for Android and iOS devices. Now you can easily tune into our streams anywhere, anytime on your smartphone or tablet. Just visit apps.lrn.fm or search for LRN.FM in the Android or Apple app stores. Please download, rate it five stars, then share the link on social media, and let your friends and family know how you're listening to LRN.FM. Download it now, free at apps.lrn.fm. That's apps.lrn.fm. Seditious Sirens is up next, live after the news, on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media capital of the world, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Friday, July 24th, 2015. Silver is trading at $14.52 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,082 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $286. And HowWar.com reports the recent bombing attack in Sirak, Turkey appears to have been a wake-up call for the Turkish government after months of relative ambivalence about the Islamic State's growth on their southern border. Yesterday, a border clash erupted between the military and the Islamic State forces, leaving at least one soldier slain. One the Islamic State fighter was also killed in the attack that followed. This sudden realization that they have a long border with the Islamic State Caliphate and that this might be a problem has the Turkish military scrambling to secure that border, digging a 365-kilometer ditch along much of the border, setting up reconnaissance drones, and installing some 150 kilometers of modular walls there. The military is also deploying fighter jets and tanks to the border region, anticipating more cross-border attacks by the Islamic State forces, a problem which opposition figures say Turkey wasn't taking seriously until the most recent round of attacks. Turkey has long been the route of choice for the Islamic State recruits to enter the caliphate, and with Turkey openly endorsing the Syrian civil war, they've done little to prevent the recruits from crossing. This recent tension along the border may serve to slow the Islamic State's recruitment. For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and permanently removed the minimum purchase order for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing and a forward-thinking approach to new technologies. 850-478-5270 or online at rrbi.co. UPI reports British police were again reminded Thursday of Europe's immigration crisis when they discovered the body of a young man on top of a commuter train headed from France to Britain. The body was discovered after the train arrived in the town of Folkestone, though investigators believe he likely died shortly after climbing a top in France. Investigators were not immediately certain of the man's identity or exactly when or how he died. Thursday's discovery follows a rash of other incidents involving migrants traveling across Europe, including one earlier in the month in which three people were injured after officials say they broke into the train's tunnel and tried to stow away. In 2115 New England, there are no borders, no states, and no regulations, yet never has a more peaceful and prosperous place existed. But Mr. Drake's security company has seen better days. Faced with the prospect of waning power, Mr. Drake intends to replace the anarchy of New England with a government. But at what cost? Will anybody care? And can anyone stop him? Anarchy in New England by Joe Jarvis is available from Amazon.com and all major bookstores. 
Reuters reports the president of the U.S. military's medical college says he took swift action after he learned in 2013 that John Henry Hagman, a former Army doctor teaching there, was injecting students with hypnotic drugs, inducing shock by withdrawing their blood, and performing rectal exams in class. Hagman was escorted off the Uniformed Services University campus in Maryland, and the college quickly offered students blood tests to determine if they had been exposed to any diseases. School president Charles Rice also said the the college launched an internal investigation into Hagman's conduct and it forwarded information to law enforcement authorities and the Virginia Board of Medicine, which revoked Hagman's license last month. Rice said, We took immediate steps, but records reviewed by Reuters, including the university's own investigation, showed that school officials had known of Hagman's teaching methods for more than 20 years. The records also show that three faculty members sat in on Hagman's course in 2012 but did not alert their superiors despite witnessing practices that the school has since banned. One former dean even pushed to have Hagman court-martialed in 1993 over similar allegations. According to the school's internal review dated December 2013, the university's culpability cast a wide net. The document includes 27 pages of finding and 45 exhibits that total more than 350 pages. In sworn statements that are part of the report, unidentified colleagues offered varied descriptions of Hagman, an iconoclast and a cowboy, some Someone who had an almost magical spell-like effect on people, and an officer on a righteous mission impatient with government rules. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. Saying that he was giving his co-workers at Marley Publishing just a few more days to catch on to him, local mentally unstable man Michael Redding told reporters he planned on exhibiting one or two more warning signs this week before, quote, finally doing this. I think I'll do just a couple of disconcerting things in front of people here at the office, maybe give them a day or two to take action through the appropriate channels. But if that doesn't happen, then I'm going through with it. The fully unhinged Redding, who plans on, quote, making this thing happen sometime next week, claims that despite displaying erratic and worrisome behavior around the office for the past few months, his actions have gone completely unreported by his coworkers. I definitely talked about my frustration with life in general, and I even discussed my fascination with all sorts of violence. But that still didn't throw up any red flags. We'll see if anyone catches on. Mike? I don't know him super well, but he's nice enough. He's quiet and he keeps to himself mostly, but I'm sure he'll come out of the shell. Just a matter of time. This is the Onion News Network. Welcome to the Seditious Sirens. We are recording from Maine tonight. Fuck.